Hey everyone, Chris here. An important note before we begin the show this week, one of the primary platforms we use for our podcast distribution, Google Podcasts, is getting shut down on April 2nd, 2024. While we are available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and plenty of other platforms, we want to ensure that you know about this in advance. Google has a simple export method for all podcast subscriptions to their replacement platform, which is YouTube Music, which I'll link in the description of the video below. If you are subscribed through this, we strongly encourage you to go through that guide if you want to keep up to date with all of our episodes in their traditional audio format. I will, of course, continue to post these episodes on YouTube in their video form after release. Thank you again for your longtime support, and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, your host Nick here, and you're listening to the official podcast of 4PlayerNetwork.com. First, I want to remind you that we are a fully independent podcast, quite literally just a group of friends who have met once a week since 2008 to talk about video games. If you like our show, the best thing you can do for us is be active in our community. I recommend Discord. You can subscribe to our show, leave us a review on your preferred podcast service, or if you're so inclined, bless us with your patronage on Patreon or Twitch. If you're new, all you need to know is this. We record these shows live every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central on Twitch, and the audio version launches on all podcast services on Friday morning. Patreon and Twitch supporters will even get the show a day early on Thursdays. But if you want to know more about any of this, about what we do, or find all the important links you need, simply visit us at 4playernetwork.com. And that's it. This is the only ad you'll ever hear on this show. So, with that said, thank you for listening. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to 4 Player Podcast, episode 788. It's March 26th, 2024. I'm your host, Nick Henderson, joined, as always, by Brad Simons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10! Here we go again. Nolan Hedstrom. Hey, how's it going, everybody? And Christopher Davis. Good evening. It is a good evening, because you know what? Fucking Dragon's Dogma 2 is out. It's in the world. Most of us here have played it, and we're going to talk about it tonight. It's kind of a bold claim to say it's a good evening based on that game. You don't have no idea how I feel about that game. Maybe it's a I bad have a pretty, yikes. I, I mean, you're you're not wrong, but I I'm I feel pretty safe in my assumption. Anyways, we're we're going to talk about Dragon's Dogma two tonight for what is I'm sure just the first time. Um, but uh, I'm very excited to talk about that. And Chris Davis as uh, the dissenter this week, he decided he was going to, he was going to say fuck dragon's dogma two and play the game. Everybody else really cares about and wants to hear about. And that's alone in the dark. Still, so, still, still can't deal with this. Can't accept this. I don't, does he play just, a lot of horror games? Can we, can we talk about this right now? Does Chris he play Dave, a lot of, he no, I mean, he, he, evil stuff, right? he plays, he plays horror games, but then likes to talk, brag about the fact that they don't, do anything for him mm. yeah no, I, I, think, I, again, I am that's dead inside. also part of this yeah that's part of it but hey you know if he's yeah. finding some if, if he's maybe he's finding some value here i'm i'm very i am personally I curious about here. value after the fact i'm talking about his initial purchasing decision seems I mean, it's, weird to me i got into one. this whole like jody comer thing and let don't get me started down that road apparently had no idea who that what no I can't. I can't with this man. I cannot. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not going to ask you to. We'll talk about Alone in the Dark a little bit later. But first, um, I, I, we're going to do something a little bit different this week because normally we like to kind of open talking about fantasy critic stuff um, and how it's affecting our own personal league that we're that we're, we have going. But uh, considering we're coming up on the end of March, we've, we're three months into our first ever community fantasy league, uh, and Brad said he was comfortable. Uh, talking some trash about the community and their leagues and how they're doing. Mm. Yeah, I mean, always. So uh, always gonna... very comfy for me. Yeah. <laughs> talking shit. We, it's funny. We had people in the Discord who were like, "Are you gonna do? A, are you gonna talk about the community leagues tonight?" I was like, "Yeah, we're going to talk about it." Quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Really, I'm just giving Brad license to just you know talk what's, mad what's shit. made it so easy, Nick, is a full year of them, the community, talking shit about our first year's league, you know, and yep. the choices that we were making, you know. And now you and get then to all of a sudden, you know, ripped. the ball's in their court, and they got to make some of these decisions, or just you know, yeah. draft the ones you can because you don't always get the ones you want. Uh, that is true. 
So, um, I guess Brad, yeah. just fucking go, take it away. I don't oh, know how oh you do like we're go. literally go, getting right Let's into. Let's do it. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, should should we should we start with like a kind of a catch up on ours for the week? Yeah, I mean, There's some action. You know, games came out. Games score, got reviews. You know, uh, there's been a new pickup. Yeah, there has been a new pickup. Oh, really? It's Brad. I, I'm. I'm. I mean, oh, yeah. Talking about the game that came out last week. Shit, Nick. Nick was talking shit. I was fucking, talking shit. Fucking Redfall, Forspoken, 2023. Nick, all of a sudden, you know, is talking shit about 2024. I'm not talk. Okay, first of all, to be fair, I wasn't <laughs> talking shit. I was just kind of surprised. Oh, okay. Yeah. That so there was the pickup this week was for Astro the unannounced Astrobot game. No, it's and, for the rumored Astrobot sorry. game. The rumored unannounced Astrobot <laughs> game. Yeah, um, I got it for a I, buck because you know who's gonna take that. I, I've thought about right. I've thought about bidding on that several times, but then I decided I didn't even I'm know try- it was a, on there. I'm trying yeah. to be relatively risk averse. This there's year a lot of rumored stuff on there, mm-hmm. even stuff that's like, uh, yeah, it's probably coming. So, sometimes that's on there, right? Um, yeah. But this is this is I've seen Jeff Grubb mention it quite a few times, and you know he's not always gonna he's not always gonna be accurate. But the very good point that the PlayStation Five Pro is coming out this year as well. So the, the and the fact that like the last few times that Sony has put out new hardware, there has been an Astrobot something, and that that studio has not put out a game in a while. You know they shuttered Japan Studio and uh, Sony did, and the only like surviving uh, 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 team, and the people kind of were moved over to that team was the Astrobot team. So, hmm. you know if if this thing exists, the, the time is right. I feel like you know by the end of the year. So whatever, got it for a buck. I don't know. Maybe it'll be. I mean, honestly, I was just kind of excited about Japan Studio thinking about Puppeteer. And what got me thinking about it was that fucking Princess Peach game knockoff, which Mm. also came out, which is just a cheap Puppeteer knockoff. Uh, Um, That was a crispy draft, and he mm -hmm. ended up not doing great. Sitting at a 75. 75. 75, yeah. On Open Critic. Also, uh, Ed's rise of the ronin also sitting at a 76 which you're not playing right. apparently right is that you, that's what you kind of yeah, alluded to yeah, right? i have it i started it mm-hmm. yeah hmm. we're not going to talk about it tonight though maybe next week no just because i'm not very far or anything but uh probably next week yeah okay um, okay um by the yeah, way i just for this week i was just talking shit because i thought it was fu- when i found out it was brad, that brad was the one who did astrobot and i was like he just realizes he fucked up with super mario the super the unannounced super mario th- 3d game and now it's just like fuck it just might as well double down on the unannounced risk <laughs> risk games well uh, yeah. all down the whole i, mean, I don't me. think the mario thing was a fuck up now that there's talk of a delay fuck up's maybe not the right word it but... is going to be a problem i guess but i mean I how about this drop it. the super mario misfortune <laughs> yeah maybe it's a better I mean, it's way a, to it's it. unfortunate that was definitely like a, you know i mean it was a fourth round pick for me but it was still one that like i was gonna be like you know they're going to underestimate it, but it, underestimate this. But if, if it comes out, it's probably going to do well. Ah, oh, yeah. You know. uh, by the way, this is not really a, a, a huge update, but uh, the game that I drafted a few weeks ago, Indica, got a release date of May 8th. So that's coming pretty soon. Very yeah, excited okay. for that. Right. Um, but anyways. Uh, you know, you look at the release. list of upcoming releases. It's kind of depressing, at least for our league, because... You see April and it goes all the way to September for like yeah. 12 games. Well, a lot of the stuff after the first quarter is not going to have dates yet. I mean, it'll fill in. Yeah. It'll fill in. Yeah, it'll it'll fill in. The I think fact that it goes out that far is what gets to the, me. It's been the a, only only game on my list with a date is World of Goo 2. Everything else <laughs> is just hope and a prayer. When is World of Goo, when is World of Goo 2 coming out? Do we know? I don't know. Next few months. Yeah, <laughs> next, soon, next soonish, yeah. Uh, according to this, May twenty third. Yeah, and just to clarify, because Zero Skies was calling into question your uh, depressing comment, it just means depressing in terms of fantasy critic. Like, like we're we're gonna go a long period of time when we may not have a lot of updates for our fantasy yeah. critic. That doesn't mean games aren't coming out or that we're not playing them. Oh, or we're not gonna have anything to talk about. It's just we're not gonna have a lot to say about fantasy critic during that interim. But it'll fill in. It'll fill in. Anyways, community leagues, Brad. What's up with the community? All right, we got Community League number one, a miserable pile of gamers. <laughs> uh, so, how I me? Mean, how how should we do this? I mean, 
Okay, can I can I just say who I think is maybe like the front runner and who's probably sure. riding the struggle bus? I mean, what do you think? Sure, that's. I mean, I mean, all right. So, and I, and I, and, and I'll, well, I'll list off the games on who I think is the front runner or the couple of front runners, and y'all can all throw in y'all's opinions as well. But okay, um, okay. first league we got Bogart Bear, Zanny, Villasaurus Rex, Brucey the Wizard, and Prince of the Universe, aka Metroidvania Mania, who swore at the beginning of the year to only bid slash draft on metroidvanias not wow. going well in terms of projected points but we all know projected <laughs> oh points don't i thought you were gonna say he's not going well like he's already fallen off the boat and he's not doing that anymore or is that really is he still is he still like is he keeping his word on that um no he's sticking to it he's sticking to it for okay. sure okay. for sure for sure uh this is you know a competitive league i think and you know not a lot of stuff out hmm. i think um man some of these leagues, it's crazy how far they got into the leagues without someone drafting a certain game. Or even like, so, sometimes I'll see a bid on a league going, wait a minute, no one picked that up during the draft? You're just now bidding on that? Holy shit. Um, but this one, honestly, is pretty close. I, I think if any of them any of them on the list are a little dicey, it might be Prince of the Universe because he's so committed to his metroidvania list and you know when metroidvanias are typically indie games and indie games typically review a little soft he did get prince of persia which reviewed really well but again that one's not your traditional indie game he also got heart Forth alicia on his list oh my god that's the game i kickstarted back in the day that i, I keep forgetting like, exists that game existed like for 10 years before wait a Kickstarter. second I wait mean, a second that's, that's not a metroidvania it's supposed to be like yeah, a it is. Art, Absolutely. is it yeah heart for the is, is a which is funny because like when i that's, I, no, that's never coming out when I kickstarted that game, I would ne- if you would ask me what genre it is, I never would have described it as a, as a Metroidvania. But that was like I was living with Nolan when I kickstarted that game. Wow. Uh, so, yeah. That's this, not coming out this year. This is a tough one. I think it's close. Honestly, it's hard to say. I, I'm just glad Zanny also uh, picked up via a bid the rumored new Astrobot platformer. Mm. A little bit about that. But, you know, it's the kind of thing where early on, right, you know, somebody got Tekken, somebody got Yakuza, somebody got Rebirth, you know, like those all first round picks right? all hit really well. Dragon's Dogma. Um, right now, the most points is Bogart Bear because he, he got Dragon's Dogma, Persona, Unicorn Overlord, uh, which all have big points out so far. Yeah. Uh, you know, and he's got he does have that unannounced Mario game on his list. That's probably going to be a drop, but no one counterpicked it. No one was brave enough um but everyone's looking good the counter picks look good this is one of the, like the closer leagues i think some of these okay. other leagues uh, we'll get to the next one some of these little, other leagues are full of clowns more dicey um <laughs> prince's counter I, can i say out of i'm looking at prince of the universe's list his counter picks were also the plucky squire and animal well and both those are like some of the most like promising looking indies coming this year hmm. I, I, I don't know about that prince so yeah but everybody there's else gonna, i feel like solid, there's gonna honestly. be a lot of super drops between all of our things that are going to be used on counter picks yeah. this year i can already tell all right league league number two this is uh the difficult six because they have a sixth person um uh, ah. we got revixi ichi's kid aptum drunken merchant skate for life and halcyon nine this is interesting a lot of action here as well some of these are like pretty damn full crazy we got first pick of this league was six on Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, <clears throat> I don't believe this it. This one, Ichi's is looking really good. I got to be honest with you. He did pick up Bellatro. He's the one other mm-hmm. person who got Bellatro between Nolan and the other leagues. He got his for a dollar, though, you know. <clears throat> <It's fine. laughs> Brad's still bidding. Hey, I, I only outbid mine by a couple dollars. But uh, he's also got Silk Song, you know. He's going to be waiting a little bit, and he's, but he's got some strong indies. I feel like everybody picked up Pacific Drive and it, it underperformed a little bit according to people's expectations. But it did, you know, it did. Yeah, I think that game still has a real shot of being in my top ten. I, I think, think I think more people Ronin, need to be playing it. Rise of the Ronin was also one that was kind of picked across the board, and 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 Peach as well, and and a lot of people people got hurt this week i think because of those games honestly they both reviewed pretty soft uh oof. drunken merchants got metroid prime four on his list i don't know about Ooh. that but some oh. strong indies he got rebirth obviously rebirth the big winner so far um, you know aptum 
looks strong, but yeah, he, he drafted Hades too. Hades two is going to be a goose egg. That's the thing. There's not coming out of early access this, this year. Yeah, that's going to enter early gonna access. That's going to be that's going to be another one kind of like Chris Davis's. Um, uh, what's the thing? Remind me the the no new the Ori. Wicked. No rest for the wicked, which looks mm. amazing. Looks amazing. I think it would be a, a, a very strong pick any other year, but I don't see it coming out of early access before the end of the year. I think I, Hades is going to be kind of the same same thing. If I knew it was entering early access, that it was going to be an early access game, then I wouldn't have yeah, picked it. Yeah, I get it. It's I would have been all over that too. If, if you know, Halcyon, I feel like is one of the few people who actually managed to snag Helldivers before that came out and became a, a little phenomenon, mm. which is nice. But honestly, I'm looking at this, and maybe I'm a little biased because this is similar to some of my picks. But if some of these come through, I think Brad Skate for Life has got some strong <laughs> Suit, picks. Double biased. He's got, He's got Flight Simulator, which we know is going to score well. Paper Mario, I'm sure, is going to score well, right? Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, which is below. Yeah. He's got Prince of Persia, which is an early win. But then, like, he's got Prestige Indies. And again, they all have to come out. But he's got Plucky Squire, Earthblade, Mina the Hollower, and World of Goo 2. Plus Holy his counterfeits are, are Metroid Prime 4 and Avowed. And I feel like those are pretty good Ooh, counterfeits, yeah. honestly. Yeah. So... But, Wait, sorry. Who who is this again? That's Brad Skate for Life. This is Skate for Life. Yeah, I think Skate for Life's got it. I think this is another like pretty close league. Um, you know, uh, Ravixi's got some big points on the board already with Yakuza and Unicorn Overlord, but you know he also got kind of like a small L with Rise of the Ronin and Mario vs Donkey Kong. All in all, pretty good, decent, competitive league. Everyone's looking pretty strong here. Now, let's get to. Uh, oof. No, I'm just kidding. League number three. This is L three. Or no, this is League League X. League Ligopo three. I don't know how to say this. This one's Sonji, Zero Sky, Skylar, Haste, and Scud. Hmm. Some strong picks. Haste Haste made some bold choices early on, including an unannounced new Forza Horizon game. Forza. I don't know if that one's gonna pan out. I, I <laughs> um, don't know. I'd- also, he also picked up Hades too, which could end up being a goose egg. But he got points on the board with Tekken, which is nice. He also counterpicked Silk Song. He counter oh bye Nick. He counterpicked Silk Song, which is dicey because um, I think that game's coming out. I don't know about y'all. Um, that's gonna yeah. be a big points loss. Poor ha- poor Haste. I don't know. I mean, I have to say fuck this guy because not only did he counterpick Silk Song, which is my number one pick, which you know, come on. He also counterpicked Ayudan Chronicle. And I, I kind of want anyone who counterpicks Ayudan Chronicle to like eat a big mm. one because <laughs> fuck you. We want that game to be good. Stop it. We do. Uh, we do. Yeah. We do. Of course we do. It's the spiritual successor to Sweet And the creators have passed away. Who who wants ill will on Ayudan Chronicle? Only assholes. Um, that's what I say. Yeah. Um, Scud, you know, he picked he. The only one I think on Scud's list that's a little iffy is Hyperlight Breaker because I don't. It's, I, hmm. I think I it's launching moment. in early I access, that, and I, yeah. I don't think that's probably going to come out. Um, I think also, that's going to be another early access one. Yeah, he drafted Neva, Neva, which Neva? is the. Do you remember the that Greece? game? Grease, Grease, Grease. It looks it's like one of those game? artsy indie games that's probably going to be pretty cool, but not score very strong. Like it's no, going to be. I it's. Think, I don't think that's necessarily true. I mean, I think it has potential. We just don't know what it is. They they only showed like a cinematic trailer. I, I, think. I at some point I looked up Grease to see how it scored from before, and I can't remember what it was. But I don't remember being particularly. Yeah, yeah it, it wasn't like it didn't set the world on fire. But it it, it it from what I understand, that is a a well liked game outside of critical reviews. Like I still see people occasionally talking about that. Um, yeah. Resonated with some people, for sure. For uh, Sanji sure. Sanji is a little dicey here, you know, M- mostly because Arc Raiders is that. Is that coming out and is that going to be out of early access? I Once don't know human? what that is. <laughs> Once human? I, I don't even know what that is. Sovereign Syndicate came out earlier this year. Reviewed kind of soft. But, you know, he's got big points on the board with Dragon's Dogma 2, Helldivers 2, Unicorn Overlord. He's doing good. But his counter picks are Plucky Squire, which is, you know, I don't know about that. That game looks really cool. He also counter picked Hellblade 2, which hmm. I don't know what he was thinking there, but something tells me that's almost like like review i mean like it's a sequel to a game that's well liked and well reviewed 
and I don't uh, think it's it's probably not going to perform yeah. worse than the first one. Yeah, it's, it's probably only going to perform better than that game. So I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what what the reasoning is there, but uh, we'll see. But again, um, we have to remind everybody that counter picks this year were tough. Like really Skyler, tough. I think Skyler's in good shape. With the exception of the unannounced 3D Mario platformer, which was his number one pick, bold, because we think that's Man. probably not coming. Last now. week in June, Persona? maybe. Last week of June, it's going to be nothing but counter super drops. <laughs> Just everybody we'll super yeah. dropping shit across I mean, the board. Yeah. yeah. He got Persona. He got Yakuza. He got uh, Pacific Drive. Um, Plucky Squire, Union Chronicles. He's got some strong stuff. Satisfactory, which was uh, which was uh, um, a pickup that Outcoming. I got, which is most certainly will score well. Um, the But the thing is, his counterpicks are good. He counterpicked Hades 2, which is probably going to be a zero pick, zero points. And he mm-hmm. counterpicked Rise of the Ronin, which he only lost six mm. points on, which is good. You know, a lot, a lot of people I think are gonna are gonna burn their uh, super drop super on drop. counter picks, and yeah. he's looking like he's gonna be minus six for the year on counter picks w- without having to spend the money, which is huge. Right? Wow! Yeah. Um, this is absurd. Okay, Zero Skies is done with his list. I'm gonna read this off. What? Because it's a good like... one too. It, it's a good it's a good list. He, there's one rough mistake on here. But I think Zero but Skies, what this is idiot. Impressive. He was last in his draft, and he got Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. What? Yeah. Uh, Interesting. I don't know. Then he got what? Flight Simulator, Mina the Hollower, Rise of the Ronin, which reviewed Saw, Hellblade 2, Metaphor Refantasio, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, which reviewed pretty well, No Rest for the Wicked's a little bit of an L, because I don't think that's coming out of early access. Then he got Stellar Blade and Rise of the Golden Idol, which is like... His lineup Damn. is done and it's strong. And he does, and if he has to super drop no rest for the wicked, that's fine because his counter picks were Arc Raiders and Homeworld 3, which I think are either not coming out, not gonna be 1.0, or not gonna be good. Uh, mm-hmm. Homeworld 3 impressions have been dicey. Not great. I mean, our own our very own Ed decided to drop it. So I think he's in really good shape. But let's move on to the final league. Final league. We have the Gamer Hot Tub League. Awkward Gamer Hot Tub League, sorry. <laughs> Awkward Gamer Hot Tub. All right, this one's Shikilski. Oh, no, this is the Green Toast League. Mr. Green Toast, <laughs> Slop Dog, Tack, Tubala, Fodala, and Shikilski. Shikilski, talking on Matt, Shikilski thinks he's got this shit in the bag. Y'all be the judge. I mean, he's definitely got the most projected points with 129.2 projected points. Versus Mr. Green Toast's 20.47 projected points for the year. Wait, wait. In the 20s? Wait. <laughs> Again, projected what? points don't mean shit, but let's look at the numbers. Chikuski <laughs> thinks he's got this in the bag, but I've seen confident people about projected points before. It really doesn't mean shit until everything is out. Yeah. But um, anyways. <laughs> You gonna give give us that Shik- list? I, 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 yeah. Okay. We'll 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 do Shikusky first because he thinks he's got this, and y'all tell me. <laughs> I think he has got a couple of competitors. Y'all tell me. His list okay. is pretty impressive. He's got Persona Three, which is out. Flight Simulator, Tekken Eight, which is out. Big points. Black Myth, Hellblade Two, Metal Gear Solid, Snake Eater, Sandland, Indiana Jones, Unicorn Overlord, which is a late bid. Um, also eighteen points. Deep Rock Galactic Survivor. And here's the here's the wait. Kicker. Is that Deep Rock Galactic Survivor like a full game? Is or is that an expansion? Mm-hmm. It's a separate oh. game. No, that that's a, that's a Vampire Survivor game in that universe. Oh, but fun. it launched an early it launched. Really, it's an early access launch. I don't think it's going to be 1.0. And and this is where mm-hmm. Shikilski mm-hmm. might be in trouble. But the but here's the real reason that he's confident, and I think maybe he should be confident. He counterpicks Suicide Squad. Mm. So he earned 10 points right now on a counter pick. Damn, and is it down to 60? Yeah. He also counterpicked World of Goo too. So fuck you, you're gonna lose points on that. But we'll see. He's, he he's gonna counter, he's at least going to counter out like uh cancel out the, the 10 points. So that we'll he got see. He's confident. I could see Metal Gear mm. Solid maybe not shipping this year. Truth, truth be told. And Deep Rock Galactic Survivor, I could see not hitting 1.0 this year. So it, it's not a done deal. Here's who I think is still in the running uh tubala for dollar it's got rebirth final Fantasy seven rebirth silk song princess peach see the thing is tubala was feeling good but he he had both rise of the ronin 
and Princess Peach Showtime on his list, which both came out this year, this week. Double whammy. Six points each. Mm-hmm. Double whammy. But yeah. he still has Metaphor. He, st- he got Brothers to Tell of Two Sons, which got him 11 points. He got Earthblade, right? He's got three more slots. It's still a strong lineup. You know, like last year, I won with two 70s on the board, right? Like yeah. you don't need wins across the board to win the league. The thing is, his counter picks are the killer clowns from outer space game, which I think is a great counter pick. And mm. Skate Story, which is an indie game that with a cool look, but I could see it easily like reviewing soft, right? So I, I think I think he's definitely still in the running because again, Shikuski might have some big L's coming down the, the line. Slop Dog also I think is in good shape. He's got Yakuza, which is out, Plucky Squire, Paper Mario, Mina the Hog mm. War, World of Goo 2, Rise of the Golden Idol, Rift of the Necro Dancer, and Animal Well. He's got like all the prestige indies on his list, mm. which is impressive. The problem is he also counterpicked Hellblade 2. I don't know what people's reasoning was there. I think people are misinformed about Hellblade. <laughs> the thing is, he could super drop the 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 Hellblade 2 counterpick, and I think he probably even plans to. He also counterpicked the altars, which looks pretty cool. So we'll see. We'll see. But he's definitely still in the running. Like these games aren't going to be out for a while. And I think that's why like projected points are are lower for stuff like this. Which one is the um, altars? That is from the creators of. Uh, they showed a trailer for it at the last uh, Game Awards, right? Remember that movie Moon with uh, Sam Rockwell? Mm-hmm. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, it's like it's like yeah. That, that does. And look it's yes. from the creators of hmm. um of the, Eleven Bit Studios. Yeah, Eleven Bit Studios. Frostpunk, it's... but but specifically the This War of Mine, I think. Team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe that does look rad as hell. Yeah. All right, now, we, dude. We gotta, I, I we gotta this... do Green Toast real quick. I had I, this I moment the last week where I, for a second, for a split second, I thought. Holy shit! Nobody in our team has picked up Frostpunk two, and I was like, "Wait a second! Yeah, no one had to. Have, no one had yeah. to have gotten this." And I looked at yeah. it, and I was like, "Your second or third that was on my short list that. too." I would have. I yeah. was yeah. like, "Gonna." I, I got. Right I got like super excited for a second. I was like, "Oh shit! I need to get sneak in here and get this." Oh, you no. Nope. It was a really dumb moment. I feel. I feel <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Tack, Tack. You know, I don't know. He drafted Hades two as well, but he's got Dragon's Dogma. He's got Stalker two. I don't know if that's coming. But he's got Frostpunk too. Ooh, he's got Pass of Green Toast. I don't think that's going to hit 1.0. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know about Tack. He also counterpicks Flight Simulator, which mm. when, <laughs> when you're trying to counterpick something, it's either something that you feel like is not going to come out, not going to review that well, or both. Not like yeah. for sure. The year is in the title. Also, it's Flight Simulator. The last one was like a 92. It's not going to like review poorly. I don't, I don't know the reasoning there, but all right. Green toast. All right. Green toast. We have to talk. Number one pick was the indie game skate story. And he went second. I I love you. Green toast. I love you. This is just, it's funny. (laughs) By the way, he, he's got five counter picks. Like five, five of his games are counter picked. Oh, his second pick was the altars. Wow. His third pick was Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden, third round pick. Was he did he get did he get the wrong memo? Was this supposed to, <laughs> did he think we were doing the like the, the opposite like we we're going Ooh, for the okay, lowest? Pick? Okay. Okay, Nick. I'm sorry. I was a little I'm, too I'm, mean. I'm no. sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, fourth pick I love was Killer toast. Clowns from Outer Space, which is bold. Killer Clowns, fourth yeah. round pick. Then he then Suicide Squad. <laughs> oh. Uh now he's trying to rally a little bit. He's got Star Wars Outlaws, Pacific Drive, and Pepper Grinder, which I think is the only league that has Pepper Grinder. That game I comes so, out yeah. this this week, so it's going to be too late for anybody else. But Pepper Grinder looks cool. I played the demo. It was pretty cool. Um, also, he counterpicked Frostpunk 2. I mean, again, I don't... Here's the Green thing. Toast. Here's the thing. It's pretty clear. It's pretty clear Going down that with this Green, Toast, <laughs> Green Toast is the underdog of the entire is community that, that league. The it's like... Yeah, I mean, I, he's <laughs> the big dummy dum dum. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we didn't tell y'all ahead of time, but we have a an award called the big dummy dum dum <laughs> award, and you have to accept it if you have the lowest score. Oh, it's man. thrust nice. upon you. You don't accept it. He'll be okay. Look, l- let's look at it this way: if he does, if he ends up not having the lowest score, like that should be a dub, right? He's fighting yeah. for not last place. That that'd be cool. I, I mean, that's kind of how I felt myself last year, so I get it. But like, some of these yeah. picks are questionable. <laughs> you felt that way last year. Shut up, Mike. I I did. I did feel that <laughs> way for. Okay, a look. I got Red Redfall last sucked, year. but like you weren't you weren't like it wasn't a big tragedy. What place were you last year, Nick? I think fourth. 
Okay. Yeah, fuck Anyways, me, right? That's it for the community leagues. I thought I was going to be talking way more trash than I was, but like, there's some pretty solid rosters out there, honestly. So, um, you know, let's uh, let's just plan on checking back. Again, if you want to... F- First of all, I will say this. If you want to check in with any of these leagues, there's links. If you go to the Welcome channel in our Discord, I have links to all the Discord or all of the uh, community leagues there um, so you can follow along. Um, and also, if this sounds fun, cons- maybe consider playing along next year uh it's it's been it's been cool we'll check back in with the community it's league free. maybe we in can a, do as like many three. as we leagues as right. we like i think the i think the more right. leagues that the more teams we have set up though i think the fewer slots we have to do right because you only have at some point you only have so many well i guess maybe not maybe you could well i mean it just means you're gonna be really scraping i mean truth be told there's nothing stopping any i i don't think there's anything stopping you on the website from just starting up a league right now for people who just want to jump in late you know, you just can't draft games that are already out. I mean, really, mm. that is true. That is true. But uh, in a, if you want to participate in like an official capacity where we kind of like go over the stuff on the podcast and stuff, consider playing next year. It should be fun. It's been fun so far this year. So thanks to everybody who is playing along. And uh, with that said, let's go ahead and get to it. I don't know how you all want to break up the, the discussions tonight. We have Dragon's Dogma 2. We have Alone in the Dark. I do want to talk a little bit about this Judas thing. I'm going to let Chris Davis kind of lead us through that because he's been paying way more attention than I have, but I don't know how you, how we want to do this. What, where do we want to go first here? Any, any, any dragons dogma. Come on, Nick, cut the crap. All right, drag. Fuck it. Let's do it. Dragons. Dog. We, you know, dragons dogma too. Let's go. Um, yeah. Well, where do we go? Alone in the dark. No, come on, man. I've been waiting 12 years for this shit. We, yes, that is, that is we factual. Have. That is factual. I also want to apologize. I mean, so I got like 30 minutes of footage here. Uh, I am. I don't know how far along y'all are. I'm, I'm going to assume that we're far. Really. I mean, it's, a, it's one of those things where we're, we're t- potentially going to see some stuff. But in reality, some clips I saw no, 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 online. Well, the point is you're not going to because I'm only well, about to. I'm not even at the Capitol. So like I oh, am. Whoa. OK, but I'm, I'm also like closing in on 10 hours. So <laughs> Oh, uh, no. What have you been doing? Did you get lost? Yeah, what the fuck? Okay, I, okay a couple things. I spent about an hour and a half to two hours of that in the character creator. Three, I have been uh, pretty much just exploring the wilderness because I'm having so much fun with it doing that that I'm just not really mm-hmm. caring how long it's taking me to traverse. It's funny, when you think about the original Dragon's Dogma, it, you kind of have that same setup, right? Where you're like traveling. You even have like the ox cart thing, right? You're like, okay, let's go to the capital, mm-hmm. right? And that journey to the capital in the original game is like super short. This yep. game, I think I'm about to enter the capital. Like I'm, I'm right on the outskirts now, but like this game, I've just been running around this world on foot with my pawns, uh, like I said, coming on seven or eight hours now, and I'm I'm having fun, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, but in this footage, just thirty minutes of footage, I don't ever like fight any like giant monsters, so I do apologize hmm. for that. But hmm. it is a blasty blast. But that's just kind of okay. where I am. Where are y'all in this experience so far? I'm in Batal. I'm, I'm in like the that that second desert uh, part of the country, continent, whatever. Um, that's sort of like a new biome for Dragon's Dogma, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as like how many hours, I don't know. A lot, you know. Like the first game, this game is very addictive. Like it's very easy to lose time playing this game, just because it's not only point. because everything kind of takes a long time to do in this game. You go on these journeys, right? Um, mm-hmm. But it's just very addictive, right? You know, I, I think this up is locations. And yeah, I was shit. when I was streaming this last night um because we had this conversation last week about organic exploration and games and whatnot i I don't even remember what that was in relate in reference to we were talking about rise of the ronin or something i don't remember but um this feels very organic can i set up that conversation because it's definitely about the world design and exploration because i've been thinking a lot about this so the original dragon's dogma came out 12 years ago and it in like you know the 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 real ones they know right the ones who played Mm -hmm. it that we know but like critical critical reception wasn't great right this game lead platform 360 scored a 75 on metacritic right right also game didn't sell like off the charts at least not right away you know it eventually came to pc and did pretty well there it took a long time to get to its like you know lifetime to date numbers right Mm -hmm. um so out of the gate this was this was already sort of like a underdog um and it was a 75 on metacritic and 12 years later 
it's remarkable how similar this game is in terms of uh like the strengths of dragon's dogma Mm -hmm. are the strengths of dragon's dogma 2 and like honestly like the flaws and and the jankiness of dragon's dogma 1 are still in in a lot of ways present here it is remarkable that i don't think dragon's dogma changed i think we changed and that's 12 years assessment. later, Dragon's Dogma 2 comes out and it's an 89 on Metacritic. And it's because, you know, so much has changed. We've changed, right? Mm-hmm. Souls went mainstream, right? Like 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 the the rejection of of like the Assassin's Creed, the Ubisoft checklist open world has happened. You know, 12 years ago, people were eating that shit up, right? You know, like Assassin's Creed games were some of like the best games out there now, or like Far Cry, right? And now people are just like sick of them. They don't want that. They long for less icons on a map, right? So yeah. it's it's cra- it's crazy that like it's Suno, like his philosophy has not changed we just are more and when i say we i mean the mainstream is more in line with it in lockstep with his his beliefs on how a world and how how you know it's the journey not the destination maybe if you will uh matters so much more like i think we the people were ready if you will sure you know I, think what I, mean? I also think it's kind of it, to me it was unexpected when i booted this game up and uh, when you get to the title screen, it just says Dragon's Dogma. It doesn't say Dragon's well, Dogma 2. Or does yeah. that happen? Does I mean, that, that like change at some point in the game? Or uh, it's maybe it does. Maybe territory I... story. I mean, look, you know, like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is Rebirth. Okay, quotes, it just, you it know, just it, it's so far with you know the, the time that I've spent oh, in it. Yeah. It feels it almost feels like a hey, we couldn't really fully realize this and back in the day the and it's it, it almost at, at least where i'm at it feels kind of like a do-over in the sense that like like we're, we're going to use the same ideas the same concepts the same mechanics but we're going to just fully realize them can, and, can i ask you about that because yeah I, because and again i know you're not far but i know nolan's played more and i've, I've played a lot as well and i know people in the community have been playing a ton very active discord yes. channel a lot of people have been saying that and i believe that but it definitely it was something i had to think about at first because they're like because they're saying well this is the game we always wanted to make now we can finally make it but in a lot of ways this does feel like that game again but yeah no it it does what 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 is this game accomplishing that that first game didn't or or like why is this the successful version of dragon's dogma one you know i guess Uh, is my question I think a lot of it has to do with technology. I think I think everything just kind of feels more impressive and organic in in this game, and um, and and in ways that I just don't think were necessarily possible on on that 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 hardware back in the day. Um, the thing that I keep coming back to, and and I know, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? But like when we were talking about Dragon's Dogma one back in the day, I remember very vividly y'all having conversations because I didn't remember, I didn't play Dragon's Dogma until much later when we did it for the revival club. Right. So y'all were talking about Dragon's Dogma back in the day. And I always remember the story about being playing at night and getting cornered by wolves and like trying to like hunker around, like around the Mm -hmm. the fire or the torch and you could see them like circling you. Right. And then I come back and I play it years later and I'm like, like, no matter what I do to kind of like the, the settings on this game. And I was playing on console, I think, or maybe no, I was playing on PC. I don't know, but like, sure. I could never quite recreate that experience. Cause it, no matter how dark I tried to make the game seem, it never, the contrast was always just a little okay. too much. So I could, no, you I'm were but playing this, it a decade later though. Like, no, no, like you're back right. That's then night was right. intimidating. Right? right. You couldn't see shit. Right. But what I'm saying is, even when I came back and played it later, I didn't really get to have that experience, which is why maybe Dragon's Dogma 1 it never really felt like the huge dub to me as it did to y'all, even though I really, really wanted that. This game is giving me those moments that y'all talked about and raved about back in the day. And yeah, I think I know, but, but, but again, also... your, your perspective is unique. I, I'm more like, like the sure. perspective of someone who played it back then. What is this accomplishing that that didn't? I mean, it's hard to say. I think a lot of it is just, it's, it's, it's flashier. I think maybe the, it feels better just to kind of like control the character. The world feels a little bit more interactive. I don't know. I, th- I think it's like little things that kind of add up to a lot. Um, Cause it does feel like, 
for the most part, it does feel like that first game for sure. It does. It, and I, I do have answers to my own question. I, I was just curious what y'all thought, because it, it is a take I've been hearing all over the place. Like this is the game that they've, they've wanted to make and now they finally made it. But in a lot of ways, you know, it's still like, it's, it's weirdly, you know, it looks nicer because, you know, it's 12 year, years later and like the hardware is a lot nicer and, you know, the engine's engine is good. Right. But like, you know, like presentation wise, it's still like very weirdly, you know, we just got through, or, you know, we, we've just been playing rebirth and Yakuza and stuff. And like cutscenes in that game are like, mind-blowing like like oh like there's like a lot of money in here and there's like a cinematic eye but in this game there's like barely any cinematic qualities to like conversations it's just like two people kind of like awkwardly like like saying medieval yeah. lines at each other it, it, it's very much which is very dragon's dogma one energy That's um true. so like um, even though like the lighting and stuff is a lot nicer and the textures are a lot nicer at the same time it still has this like b quality to it of like a B, you know, like a B game quality to it, even though it's clearly a big fancy production, right? Yeah. It's weird. It's a weird product. Um, so I, I definitely have thoughts. Um, yeah. give us to, to Nick's point from earlier. Yes, um, I do feel like it was a product of the time uh, when Brad and I were playing this in 2012 or 2013. I think it was 12. It when when Brad and I were playing this in 2012. Yeah, it, it obviously is, there's a bit of nostalgia there. Uh, you know, it was definitely unique for its time. Nick, when you kind of played it in the revival, obviously other games had taken inspiration from it and, you know, made use of advances in technology to do, you know, a little bit better in their game. So obviously, you know, you'd played maybe, I don't want to say a better version, but, you know, they had taken some inspiration, done some good stuff. It didn't have the oomph that maybe it had when people were seeing this ship for the first that's, time. That's that's definitely um, a, a factor for sure. Uh, but first off, uh, one thing, um, uh, the title screen you had mentioned, yes, it doesn't say Dragon's Dogma 2, it just says Dragon's Dogma. Uh, but also, it does not have Into Free uh, playing in the background, Ooh, which is yeah. very Ooh. sad, and I can't wait for a mod to come out on PC to add it um, if there's not one on ready. Um, is that a song? But, Am I that's the okay. title song oh Dan nick would Dan know Dan because Dan he played dark oh, arisen true. dark arisen they took it out because they're cowards um <laughs> and i actually do have a mod on dark arisen for pc uh when i have uh I, it, that adds back uh denga and, so i'm missing a key uh, component it. here is what, is what oh, it is you, it, it, it was such a good song later. yeah well we'll do it during the break man yeah. um, okay. but anyway uh what's the name of the song uh, one so, more time i'm looking it up into Dan free Dan. Uh, also yeah it's dangan d-a-n-g-a-n yeah um but uh but yeah so um the game improvements yes definitely things have been improved um they've taken some of the things that you know were issues in the first game and improved on them but to your point they've also kind of done a few similar things that are kind of it does feel feel a little b tier some some things are weird to your point brad the cutscenes are, are are weird it's like they spent no time deciding hey a cutscene's going on let's place the camera here um yeah. it's just they're just like wherever the camera lies that's where it lies and there yeah. are times where it's like there's two people having a conversation but i'm just like locked in on one and like the yeah. other one's like off screen somewhere and i'm like why did they not choose to just kind of put the camera over here so you could see both or maybe are we, kinda do are it we like talking about forth. like are we talking about like actual legitimate like quote-unquote cinematic moments in the in the story because there's uh, been a I few mean, a lot there of really many nice. truly cinematic yeah. moments. So, so far there's not that many cinematic cutscenes. these are all like in engine like you literally you know i think of uh think of like a skyrim or whatever where someone runs up to you and all of a sudden it zooms in on their face and like now you're in a, a cutscene or a conversation right. but in this like they run up to you and then the camera just looks at them and then there's like a back and forth conversation yeah. going on between Sometimes you and like, like the guy you're close. escorting yeah and, and i'm like what's going on here man like this is well, but but for as an example and you're not there nick yeah and maybe you, you'll you'll get there soon but once you get to the capital there's a there's a important in sonji chat saying that's not a cutscene. i understand it's not a cutscene, but it is a a a delivery of exposition so yes. let's say that when they deliver exposition in this game they oftentimes do a bad job of placing the camera in a way that makes it feel like you're in there it's not like they just have you facing the person either the camera's off to the side it's just at a weird angle and in a weird place 
um, when, when you get to the capital, um, you're going to have a, a, a story uh, based uh, at, uh, exposition delivery because it's not a cutscene. Um, but yeah, similarly, you're in like a small room with one other person and the camera is just kind of looking at them at. I don't know. It's just weird. I don't understand why they chose this to is, do that. I know what it it's dude. This is a Japanese developed role playing game with big Euro jank energy, mm. yes. but like in also good ways, like the good kind of Euro jank energy, honestly. Yeah. And uh, God, I God, I, I, I hate to like say anything negative. I mean, I, I, I hate to like focus on the negative because I, th- I think Dragon's Dog was remarkable. <laughs> I love that first one and I love this new one. And, and, and I do have answers to my own question. Well, r- real and, quick, and I, I think it's funny. I do think they can accomplish their design philosophy with this one more than the first game. Go ahead. This skipster in chat says, I've had, t- I've had times where my camera was inside my character, so I couldn't see either side of the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> That's a perfect example. I think that happened to me mm-hmm. once. It's, it's weird. It's wild. So, so, so the big thing, I think the design philosophy, right. Of like dragon's dogma is it's about the journey, right? It's you, mm-hmm. you get these journey. quests and, and it's about, and it makes sense from like uh Capcom and like people who've worked on like monster hunter and stuff. Right. Um, also devil may cry combat's really good. Um, but it, you know, it's, it's, you don't just have a quest. You got to prepare for a quest. Right. And you got to go on this journey and it's about that journey. And it's about, it's about kind of, you know, the, what you encounter along the way and are you prepared for it and how you react to that. And if you kind of keep going or decide to turn back or can you keep going or making that decision of, should I keep going? Because, um, you know, it's about that journey. Right. And it's about stuff like nightfall. Right. And, and, you know, you have to camp and are you going to survive the night? Are you going to keep pushing through, through the night? Because some of these quests are timed, right. Which is very, you know, not friendly like game design. It's pretty subversive, subversive. And maybe 12 years ago, we, we were rejecting that because we wanted waypoints and we wanted to see all the content. And now it's like, well, you know, you're just going to fail this quest, right? We, I think we're more <laughs> accepting of that now. But ultimately, again, it's about that journey, right? And I think the problem with the first game is, is that, that the world of the first game was actually pretty small. And you ran through like the same spaces over and over and over again. You didn't have a like a huge space to explore that design philosophy of the journey so when you're running back between like grand soren and wherever over and over and over again especially because in that game like the the encounters out in the world were like more or less like the same and all the same places over and over again enemy placements are almost in the exact same spots every single time you would run past them it feels much more dynamic so the world is larger so so you're 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 exploring more of it for the first time as opposed to the same areas over and over again, which you still do. Um, the world is much larger. Your journey, your, your, your paths, your journeys are longer. Your, the, the encounters are more dynamic. So not every journey like feels the same and there's actually more stuff to find in the world, right? Like in the original game, there's only so many caves and like dungeony type things. Right. And once you did them, they were neat, but here I feel like I'm finding them constantly. And I, I feel mm-hmm. like that's a big part of exploring the world is, is you have to feel like you're actually going to like find some cool shit out there. And um, uh, so when you go on those journeys, right. And can here, I just interject here yeah. real quick, because to your point, I, it, the, the size of the world makes such a big difference in, in this game, especially because this is going to sound, this is hyperbolic, What I'm about, or what I'm about to say is hyperbolic, but is that the word I'm, yeah, hyperbolic is the word I'm, I'm looking for. Uh, it in comparison, I almost feel hesitant to even ref, refer to Dragon's Dogma One as open world because those those areas seem so. It almost felt like large open areas instead of an open world game because I I feel like like I was talking about earlier like that that journey from the start of the game to the capital city that you initiate in a very similar way in this game is like a fraction of the time it takes to, to travel that distance. And then you mm-hmm. spend so much time in that big open field kind of outside of Grand Soren uh, in that first game. Like this, like the, the, the size of that field in that first game is like just one tiny area in, in comparison in this game. And, and yeah, this it, world is denser and it's it, denser. It is denser, right? Like it feels very large and it is a lot larger, but it, it is still the kind of thing where, it takes a long time to like traverse not a huge amount of space because it's very dense and because it's it 
uh, there's a lot to kind of do along the way. And because you, sometimes you just kind of have to inch through. Um, I, I think it's the kind of game, like maybe by the end of it, it's not going to feel quite as large as, as it does early on, but I think that's good. I, I think that's actually like an interesting thing about like a, learning and exploring a world is that, you know, kind of feels smaller as you become more comfortable with it. Um, but but I think they doubled, they doubled down on the journey aspect as well. There's some things they do in this one that I think are really smart. One of them is that you have like your maximum health will continue to go down as you take damage. So mm -hmm. it, it feels like it's putting like a, like a time limit on your, on your journey because, mm -hmm. because you, you have the wonder last, right? You want to explore, you see a cave, you're like, there's, I know there's going to be treasure in there. I might find a cool weapon. I want to push for, forward. And you know, you keep getting distracted you want to explore, but you, you know, the further you push, the more your health is going to go down, the closer to nightfall it's going to be. And, and maybe you already used your one camping gear because, you know, it's heavy and you only brought one. That's the thing. Okay. I feel like this game also do double downs on encumbrance. A lot of RPGs have encumbrance, but this is one of like the, the few that actually where you feel it. You feel encumbrance and it, it and it finally feels like it's it's it has a point. And that's Brad, that you can only carry so much. What? I found this out yesterday. And then people, yeah. I've, uh, people in chat have been losing their minds about it too. Uh, the camping things are not consumables. Uh, you, you, what does that if mean? you have, as in, when you use it, you don't get, you don't lose it. You can use but, as long as you have one, you can use it over and over and over and over and over. I again. thought it's multiple use. Like if you, I don't like, think so. I, I, they eventually go away. Mister Papa Shot said it only gets consumed if you get raided, which I don't even know. That hasn't happened huh. to me yet. So I've definitely like had one or because some or because more than one and have not somebody on Twitter I, was like, guys, I've been carrying around seven of these things and I'm losing my fucking mind because I you guess don't I need didn't notice it. because I, I never carry them. I always give them to my pond to carry. And so I guess yeah. I've always assumed it's been consumed. It yeah, doesn't no, make sense I, to me because I've definitely gone last to night. campfires and have not been able to camp. I did it live on the stream last night. I had two in my inventory. I camped like twice and I still had two in my inventory. Like it's it. Then I got, and then I was like, well, I'm going to give one to my pawn in case something happens and I lose, lose it somehow. But I thought yeah, some were multi use. Unless something specifically happens, you're not going to lose it. And I'll, apparently so, that's a, mis that's a misunderstanding that a lot of people are having. I've gone up to campfires and have not been able to camp before. How is that then possible? So, there are probably scenarios, something may have happened to you on your journey that caused you to lose it somehow. But like that, I don't think that's a particularly common thing because it, in my eight, eight or so hours of exploration, it has not happened to me yet. And I hear, I'm seeing people on Twitter react upon learning this news. They're like, holy Just shit, this is like a game changer. Um, well, it's so, yeah. definitely not clear. It's not clear. That's the point. Like they do not make that clear, but like it is not just a typical. It's not like a one-time use. As long mm -hmm. as you protect it and nothing hap bad happens, I'm guessing these raids. I thought it was like a multi-use based on like the quality of the camping gear because there's there's just been too many times where I've not been able to camp. It's weird. Mm. Um, interesting. Wait, if it's in my pond's inventory, can I not use it? You can still use no, it. You can use it because that's how I've always done it, and I just assumed it was going away. The important thing is that you have it on someone in your party while you're running yeah. around. If you if you but, put but it in your storage thing, it's heavy, right? And like your weight yes, is directly is. affecting. I spend a lot of time in my menu shuffling stuff around, which is why I'm really excited to find a pawn that has that ability that allows them to like automatically distribute stuff. I found a pawn that stuff. has that ability, but I don't know if he's using it. I don't know how to make him use it. Hmm, I, I don't know either. Not, like the That's log position or whatever. I don't know if we want to transition to this at this point, but like, that's one thing that I'm struggling with. Like I, I, I love this game has fully has, re, has like the pawn system. I'm liking way more in this game than the first game, but I'm still struggling with certain things. Last night in particular, I was trying to get into a cave. Right. And I had this beautiful moment. Just, I was like, Oh my God, how am I going to get across this chasm? And then all of a sudden my, I like, I did the go, the go command to see if my pawn could figure out a way. And he ran into the ledge and like, hunkered down with his shield on his back and was like get on my yeah. back and i was like what and i ran to him and he launched me over the chasm oh, onto the my and pawn I was, was a like, mage and i had them levitate to a chest yeah, that, that I shit's crazy and i was like that's cool that is cool that shit's but, crazy but, but then at the same time i had the same pawn somehow get into a cave that i was trying to get into and i have no idea how he got there and he got stuck <laughs> and then he died mm. and i was like and i there's, never found the entrance to the cave and i was like can, can, what the fuck? it was weird 
can I just say to wrap up like this journey thing, like yeah. it, it's easy just to tell stories because like the, the game is like the story of this game is, is, you know, there's the main story, right. But it's really about like the experiences you have because of these dynamic encounters, Which is crazy. And these journeys and stuff. But like, the the one that like sort of sealed the deal of like man they really are doubling down on the whole concept of like i just got to make it to like the morning or i just got to make it to my destination and and i've been in caves where i've like oh man i've done what i needed to do here and i want to explore more of this cave but i can't i gotta come back i cannot do this i'm just my whole team is gonna eat shit if i don't back out get to a campsite or something but like I got to that second like region, like the desert area and like my fight through this desert area where there was, there was no, there was nothing, you know, I, I guess I didn't have my camping gear or whatever, but I, you know, I, 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 I just really needed to like get to my destination. I'm looking for this other capital city and it's just a fight and it's pitch black in the desert. And I like, it's just constantly fighting and I'm just barely in. hanging on, you know, I've been using wake stones just to survive. It, it's, it's brutal. And I finally get to this, this capital city. I'm like, thank God. And I'm like poisoned and my wage is constantly healing me because I have like two potions to cure like poison. And I'm like, I only have two of these. Just, I'm just going to get to an inn and I'm going to go to sleep and it's going to be better you know, because it just wasn't going away. And I'm like, I finally get to this capital city and I, I look at the icon. And I'm like, I find the end and I'm like, thank God this whole long journey is over. I've made a dragon's dog with damn you. It's You did it again. I get it. Brilliant. And I get to the end and he's like, all right, to stay here, it is 9,999 gold. Jesus and I'm like, God. you motherfucker. <laughs> they knew that they're in out in the middle of the desert can charge wow. that fucking much. And it destroyed me. I was like, Did you not you have enough money? Asshole. I had the look, I had the money, but it's a lot of money. The the economy yeah. in this game is yeah. is well it's tight right and it's and there's there's always stuff you want you never have enough money for it and 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 the ends are expensive but like you know you have to fucking sleep my health bars on all my characters were so tiny and i just needed to fucking sleep so i can be comfortable in this new area and i was i was being gouged by ridiculous in prices and i was like this shit is brilliant this is actually <laughs> brilliant i fucking hate this innkeeper right now and I just saved my game and turned it off. And I have not decided yet if I actually want to pay that cost to sleep at that. <laughs> that is, end. that's the best <laughs> twist right there. I can possibly oh, imagine. <laughs> but now you're telling me I just need camp camping gear. And info. I, I there, don't know. There's he, a lot of weird information going around. People are still finding out things about this game. So I guess I'm not oh, yeah. surprised, but at the same time, I don't, I'm not even sure if I completely believe you. Um, I'm saying I did like it I said, last I, night. I've played so much <laughs> game right now and look I all i know it. is I, there was somebody that that found out about it on twitter and they they found out because they had been carrying like seven or eight of these camp mm -hmm. and like well, yeah you definitely and then, don't need these. and then they were like i only needed one and they got rid of all of them and they were like i haven't hmm. and i haven't had to like find a new one in forever so like mm -hmm. I, and like there's probably things out there there's probably ways to lose it otherwise there's what's the even point of making them a thing that you can buy multiple maybe, times maybe like, what it is mm -hmm. is like early on in the game you get a type of camping gear that's not infinite and then people aren't realizing that you know you eventually because there's definitely more than one kind of camping gear have you noticed that they're not all yes. the same yes yeah, so it looks like they don't weigh the same gear. they don't cost the same and i'm wondering if like you just get one like early on in the game that well, is limited use or like a one-time use and that's what it gets people thinking oh i gotta keep buying these the but, one that i use there's one i used last night where there when i camped there wasn't an option to cook and i'm wondering if that had something to do with the kind of camping gear hmm. that i had they don't make it super, I've, I've run into that issue as well where i've been able to camp and not cook but speaking i thought of, i was just not having meat speaking of the like cooking the, that scenes, the cooking thing is fucking amazing so, yeah. Yeah, weird <laughs> it's so weird but i love it um chris davis are you aware of the the cooking at campsites I've heard about that. I it's don't literally know just, just it's FMV. It's just like literally like 4K footage of like a slab of meat in a grill and yeah. just the camera panning over it sizzling and stuff like so that. So what Capcom's of. gotten pretty good at lately is showing yeah. off re rendered and, and filmed food. But it's not even it's not yeah. rendered. It's like literally someone yeah, just it's, like filmed it. It's footage. Someone just films it on a really nice camera and ca it's I just like it. hmm. 
Maybe it's they beautiful. It's like, like... It makes me, it makes me salivate because it's looking at actual food. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, very very cool. Um, mm. interesting. Mm. Um, I mean, we didn't talk much about the combat. Like the combat is like pretty similar to how it was in the first game. Actually, so is the vocation system. If anything, mm-hmm. when I look at this game and I feel like huh, I feel like they had so much potential here. I'm a little disappointed by the lack of classes and the lack of skills, like it, especially because when Dragon's Dogma Online came out, they sh- they had all these new classes and they all look so cool. Like I loved you. I used to love watching videos of like these new classes going, oh, man, these are so awesome. I bet they're going to put these in Dragon's Dogma 2 or whatever someday or just like, oh, I just want to try this because that looks so cool. And then this one comes out and it's like there's really not that many classes and like the way they limit them. It's a little frustrating, you know, like you can only equip four skills on a character. I mean, this mm-hmm. is the creator of like Double May Cry, you know, or the, you know, the the series, you know, director at this point. And, and I feel like they could probably figure out how to get more than four skills on a goddamn controller than the four face buttons. And it's a little like, uh, I just it wish there sense. was a little more more to it to some of these um, vocations. I mean, that, that you, problem you, you is can solved unlock countless times a ton in other of cool games. Abilities but you have like to just, make a, a, a ton of tough choices and it's like, yeah. eh. like just like just being able to swap like like have multiple face button settings and then just swapping between them yeah. mid combat would be it's like we figured this shit out why are we still struggling with like, it it's strange so they they have this class it's like it's like you you don't get to late late in the game or later in the game called the warfare right which i was really excited they showed it in trailers and it's basically a class that can switch weapons right on mm. the fly and I'm like, oh, that's awesome. So you basically just dual class, right? You know, I can have a fucking great sword and a magic archer bow, right? Sick, right? And you could have the skills of those classes. As long as you've learned the skills of those classes, you can basically have two classes at once. Except, get this, <laughs> the one of your face buttons is the button to switch weapons. So you and sacrifice one weapons, on each? Not just that switching weapons doesn't actually switch your equipped skills so between two classes you can only have three equipped skills like what? action skills that's yeah. disappointing like like why would you limit it like that there's no yeah. potential here and it's like it's so frustrating right because it's like you know i'm a big monster hunter guy and i feel like those weapons have like insane depth right you can ha- you can play monster hunter for hundreds of hours and just dedicate it to one weapon because they're just really deep and complex and and even in the even in monster hunter rise and sunbreak they started introducing the ability to like you know do all these crazy like skill swapping and shit like like they have the knowledge and ability to do something not so limited and mm. you know i guess it's part of the design philosophy they wanted to limit the player but it's like with so many cool skills and with combat so fun like i just want to do more of this shit like the thief has sure. the ability to do this like concussive step where he can like throw down a bomb which gives him basically like a double jump which he can like string that together with with some of his other skills like helm splitter to actually reach parts of like the map that like other classes can't right um but i also have like if i want to have that that that's that's also a move that's like not effective at all in combat so if i want to like have that skill i'm basically just wasting a slot one of my four slots on something that is basically ineffective for anything but exploration and it's like come on man just let me i just want to be able to do all of these things but also still have my smoke bomb and also still have my rope to like pull things but i can't i can't i can only have a handful of things and i need the one that does damage a lot of damage vertically and the one that dashes yeah. me in. So it at almost point, feels like what choices it, do I have? Come on. It, it almost feels like they kind of prioritize trying to like encourage replayability as opposed to <sighs> just it, maximizing the fun in a single playthrough, which is kind of a disappointment. But I'd, at the same I'd be time, fine if like, I could switch like characters in my party or something again it's 12 years later and it's still a single player rpg with your one main pawn your two pawns from other games and there's like no other mechanics to like can i switch to my main pawn maybe or or like to like i I, i'm okay with it sticking to a single player game but why can't i switch characters rise of the ronin lets you switch characters on the fly you know like why can't you heard here first rise just, of the ronin better game than dragon's dogma 2 i just i don't understand some of the limitations i i under some of them i do understand because you know again that philosophy of it's about the journey and about they want it to be hard and memorable and in and dynamic and stuff but like some of these things it's like come on you have some of the best combat in the biz and you're just you know fuck 
you know, well, I'm never going to play a, a mage or a sorcerer because, because, you know, you only have these spells are for. And, and like, <laughs> I don't know. It's, mm, no, I get it. I get it. But, but, it's cool, but, but what, we, what we can say though, what we can say with the, beyond the shadow of a doubt though, is the actual act of engaging in combat in this game is fucking it's fun. sick. Yeah. It's it so fun. Even without a lock on, like using your shield, like raising your shield kind of loosely locks on to your nearest enemy, kind of like well, makes it easy fighter, to kind of... they're the only ones with Yeah, the yeah. Shield. If you're I, I am playing as a fighter, so like that's maybe specific to the fighter class, or whatever. But like it it just engaging in combat in this game is super fun. And I'm not I'm I'm talking about even just fighting like low level, like small enemies. Like, the few encounters I've had with, like, larger enemies. I mean, I, I remember playing that first game and, like, just the thrill of trying to, like, get onto a creature's back and just seeing how, like, in the st- just the, sh- the the amount of stories that I've already read, just like, even, like, the, within the first two days of this game's release, like, people tweeting about, like, this is some of the craziest shit I've ever seen in a game. And I'm like, yeah, I can't wait. To, uh, I and, can't wait to get to the, that point. And that's what I was saying that kind of sold me on the, not sold me on the game, but kind of convinced me to play it sooner than later was that, yeah, I was seeing a bunch of really cool shit people were doing. And I was like, I want to be doing that. Um, and that's so the I, thing like, that I've been watching. That's the thing we're, that's the thing we're going to be talking about at the end of the year. It's looking back in this game and like all of our kind of like our personal stories and the anecdotes from other people and whatnot. And mm-hmm. just, man, some of it's just so dynamic. And I, and like, again, we had that conversation last week. And I think, and now that I'm thinking about it, I think it, it had, we were talking a little bit about Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, in terms of like their approach to world design. And you know how I feel about that game in terms of how it handles open world content and like constantly feeling like you're discovering something neat and you never know what's around the bend. This mm-hmm. game is kind of having that same effect, but in a very different way. Like it, it obviously its approach to open world design is different than something like Red Dead Redemption Two. But I'm I'm having a lot of the same feelings and vibes that I do. Like I'm not True. like it's not the kind of thing where like you know you name drop some games that are obviously notorious for having you know kind of the Ubisoftification, and you get into kind of a rhythm and some people you know and there's value to that kind of stuff. But like after a while, things become very predictable. And this is anything but, and I'm literally just talking from the first like ten hours in this game, mm. and and being so early, like it's it's crazy, man. I'm I'm excited to keep going. I'm so excited yeah. to keep going with this for sure. By the way, uh, apparently I keep hearing this PSA, and it's not a spoiler, but apparently you need to remember where you found your first seeker coin. That's <gasps> all I know. If you found one, you better remember where you found it. I found like six of them so far. Really? Wow, you really yeah. have just been exploring the wheel, just running around the fucking world all day, man. Wow. I, I think it was mine was in the in the capital city. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, mine. Yeah. Uh... I, look, it's it's great, and like I do have. At the same time, I did start like Rise of the Ronin, which is like getting for the same reasons that like I think Dragon's Dogma Two is the right game for the right time and is being praised. Like I said, even though. You know, you know, design philosophy wise is very similar to the game that got a 75 12 years ago. Now Rise of the Ronin is getting a 75 and it's because it's the game that I think people are rejecting. Right. The yeah, very yeah. like like standard checklisty open world game. That's pretty feels pretty box standard. Um, But it, at the yep. same time, like like it's it's definitely too. It's weird to play them together at the same time. But I can they imagine definitely, they definitely both have a place. Sure. I'm glad Dragon's Dogma exists and I do I will always value that sort of thing but but you know the other style and again Rebirth we've been playing um and, and even uh Yakuza right which is another like kind of icon driven <laughs> open world game um there's definitely a place for that sort of thing as well they they can be just as addictive um in just in different ways um, but this is, but this is you know, dragons. I mean, you're you're absolutely right. I agree with you 100. percent It is just it makes it kind of that much more apparent when you play something that you know is like, okay, this is special. Yeah. And I think I think Dragon's Dogma is definitely one of those. <sighs> Nick, when are you going to get that Mystic Spear hand class? Because it's made for you, dude. I know. He's got, he's got like a robe, a hood, a hood, a hooded robe, and uh, a dual staff. You know, I I hate it personally. I stopped using it because it's like the version of cool I don't like. Which is fine, you know. Crispy would call me an idiot right now if he was on the podcast because he probably I can hear. Mystic Spear hand. 
I know, can hear him it's somewhere. Basically, <laughs> it's basically Nightwing or whatever from Batman. Batman, yeah. Um, but uh, I'll uh, I'll keep you posted. Um, I don't know if y'all notice what we were talking, but there's a point at the end of this footage where I I went to a rift stone and it was looking through ponds or like it, it, it's one of those ones that gives you a very like it just pawn like comes out of it and then starts to, that's mm-hmm. one thing that drives me crazy is the pawn how they pawns will initiate conversations with you without you actually having to actually push a button like if you yeah. get too close to a pawn that's just walking around the world they're just like hey let me tell you about myself and i'm like please stop yeah yeah wing saw it i i the the pawn that came out of the the rift stone was named come long jesus christ <laughs> Just, I, was like, I was like, well, that's, that's going in the footage. Jesus Christ. I, I, I do like the, you know, I will say the, the pun, you know, like the whole like desperation of like trying to get to my destination after a really long, hard fought journey has definitely led into situations where, you know, like I started the game using like Crispy's pawn. Yeah. Like, uh, it's like, oh, this is Crispy's pawn. This is nice. <laughs> but then it's like, wait a minute. Crispy's pawn is low level now. Like I've had to dump pawns like out in the wild when I find like rift stones out in the wild just Damn. because I'm so desperate for someone stronger, you know, because some oh, wow. of these journeys I've leveled up like like three, four times and like my pawns maybe had not leveled up in like three, four times before that. So I'm like, dude, I just need some like I need a big meaty dude right now to get me <laughs> to the end of my journey. So I'm dropping this fucking little tiny cat mage. Because I need some meat in my party, some high level meat. God damn it! Need some high so level I'm meat. Getting my ass kicked. Uh, um, so yeah, I've done that. I don't. Still I, don't, I, I but, hope I'm not way, stealing anybody's. My pawns frequently comment, and I feel like they're talking shit a little bit. One of my pawns is always, you know, my mass, my last master only used female pawns or whatever. Huh? This is kind of <laughs> weird. I'm like, okay, dude. They they do comment on that kind of stuff. There was somebody that was like rage quitting. Uh, There's it was circling around Twitter or whatever. Some person like made some really terrible like I don't know. It was some weird gamergate dude. Like he's like I I run around with all women or or all dudes because I you know women aren't made for fighting or something. And the the pawns are called basically calling me gay or something like that. So he just like <laughs> I'm rage quitting. And I was like that's that's fucking okay. amazing. Um, is oh god what was I gonna. Have oh no! I don't want, I'm stealing anybody's to... thunder. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just wondering, like, have they f- added a default way to make them less talkative in this game? I don't. I think so. actually have not seen that setting, but I embrace mm-hmm. the the chattiness now. That's so stupid. Uh, yeah. How they talk, but it's funny. It is uh, dumb. At least the voice acting is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, well, it's it's very, very medieval times. It's just very Someone... common. Just like very abundant, like they're always talking. They're very chatty Cathy's. Uh, I hope I'm not stealing anybody's thunder, but Crispy told the story in Discord that Brad apparently, when he like sent his pawn back to him, sent him with like rotten meat or something. Is that? Is that? <laughs> well, a- that's a thing you can do. Uh, yeah. Dick move, Brad. Dick he needs move. to level up his fucking pawn. That's what he needs to do. <laughs> uh, oh God. Okay. Yeah. Um, is, what, what, one more question okay. I want to ask real quick. Um. I could have sworn with the original game that there was like an online portal you could go on to just look at people's pawns. Is that a thing in this? I don't know. I mean, you, you can come go to Rift Stones and yeah, yeah, you go, go to Rift Stones. Stone. No, yeah. I'm talking about outside of the game. Hey, oh, mm. not that I'm aware of. Not, not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, when you go into a Rift Stone, you're like standing in a void, and there's just pawns everywhere. So you can like you can walk look at your friends' pawns. You can favor pawns. Mm. I mean, like all that stuff's pretty nice, and it's a, it's not, it's addictive. Kind of looking at people's. And, setups and hmm, yeah hmm. like yeah, i feel like lo- i'm at a buffet of, of ladies because you know i'm filtering it by ladies sometimes i uh, wish there was a filter for like only tall ladies but like you'll <laughs> occasionally come across like rift stones in the wild that have like themes like like i swear i've seen like you know a beefy dude like yeah. rift stone and if you go in there it's just like beefy like fat guys like all of them in there and there's no one else just like it's like the yeah. fat guy rift stone and it's like look man i know you need a pawn but this is where you're at and if you, if you, <laughs> you we're all beefy dudes this and is a very different cool buffet that you're in like, yeah oh man yeah. It's cool. okay this we game's need... cool it's charming it's, it's nice I like this game is very very cool all right we're gonna go ahead and take our break and when we come back um we're gonna talk about Judas. We're going to talk about Alone in the Dark. And of course, we're going to wrap up with the four player minute. So if you're watching us live on Twitch or YouTube, stick with us. We'll be back after this short break.
He lost me. Hey, everyone, welcome what? back to the show. Let's go. Let's do it. The moment you've all been waiting for. Uh, alone in the dark. Chris Davis. Really? You, ha you have... Uh, let me guess. Real the quick, big Chris alone Davis. in the dark fan here. Let's be real. The big <laughs> yeah. horror guy, alone in the dark fan. Yeah, I feel like Judy you're totally stealing my, stealing my thunder here. Okay, uh, let, let me reiterate again for like the fifth time why I chose to play this game. Because you wanted, I to, purchase you wanted this to be... Game. We are three Purchase. months into 2024, and I have played to completion two video games. Both were JRPGs in excess of 80 hours each. So and you I break. wanted something and? shorter to say oh, yeah. that oh, I would be able to play video finish a game, three games in three months. That's all you I really want. Prince. If someone that, that, handed you a fine. copy of, uh, of this game and said, play this, I'd be like, fine. I don't you know. know. You bought this game yes and i know you had a coupon or something right i had but a coupon like, i had it for 30 like, percent off i'm just saying this doesn't seem like your genre it doesn't seem like your series you're a big series guy i don't think this is anybody's series really so, so maybe zerby i mean like this didn't get great reviews i'm just saying like what was so compelling about this one i was curious the last alone in the dark game i played was the 2009 game which was sometimes terrible. Oh, okay so you did play that game Yes. Hey, real quick. Is the 2009 History. one the one like the sticky tape yes. or is that? Okay. Of course. Yeah. I did play I mean, that there's, one. There hasn't been that many alone in the dark games. And like, I don't think any of them are like, I mean, the original is considered like important, right? You know, it is pre resident evil cinematic camera angles. Right. Right. You know, right. it was a big deal, not a big deal, but it was influential. Right. But like, I don't think the series is ever like, you know, scored but in let's the just 80s. people the expectations <laughs> it's, it's, of, expectations for this game were tempered uh, I mean, they were let's be real here i don't think anyone was expecting <laughs> the world of this game this is again why I, I thought it was a little strange that chris davis randomly said that to pick it up purchase it this is a full price game right yeah it, it was sixty dollars it's not seventy yep, dollars did you play the demo from like a year ago or whatever i did not i did um me too. Anyways, here anyway, I, I will say this before you get started. I, on a personal level, I am still very curious about this game because what atmosphere happens? wise and kind of genre but wise, this, this, this very much does lane, to me. Right? This is my lane. Yes, this is my lane. Chris That's Davis thing. is That's in thing, my right? lane. Someone who longs for horror games, there's so many out there. There's like awesome horror indie games constantly being recommended all of the time, right? Nick plays so many of them. He talks about them on the podcast. Carlos plays them, you know chai tai all kinds of people in our community are constantly recommending cool horror games where he picks the big budget full price one that got bad reviews and i don't get it it's not even his genre he didn't even know who jody comer was i thought maybe yeah. he had a crush on her and i'm like okay i get it you know killing eve fan and and i posted a picture of her it's like oh it's about it's you know he's, he, and he's like oh who's that or he's like that's jody comer right i don't think i've ever seen her in anything and i'm like okay sure but then he's like, I did see, and he's like, oh, she's the lady, or somebody says, um, he says he watched the movie Free Guy, purchased and watched the movie mm -hmm. Free Guy, and didn't even notice that she was in the movie. And I'm like, she's yeah. like the lady in the, main the movie. Character? How do you watch Besides that movie Ryan and Reynolds. not notice that she's the lady in that movie? Well, when you're watching a movie and the memory, the movie isn't very memorable, like I don't pay attention That's to nice. actors and actresses sometimes, man. Like I, had, I went, I went through her whole IMDb. Never seen anything she'd ever done except for that one movie that I bought for like seven dollars because it was on a four K. You know, whatever. Okay. So okay. get off my dick. Right. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just saying. I thought maybe you were a stand, but that was wrong. Also, you bought this game on a whip. I got. It. Yeah, you, let's you, hear you, about you, it. Yeah, let's let's talk about it. Let's actually talk about it. So this you know, is. I'll... From right. the Swedish developer Pieces Interactive, their last of game of note, like full release, was Magicka 2. Um, they took over Magicka I... from Arrowhead, who went on to make Helldivers, which also got a release <laughs> last month and was really fucking good. Um, how, how do we feel about Magicka? What's the history of Is Magicka like well, a world I don't received? Think it, I don't think people liked Magicka 2 that much. No, mm. they, I, Magicka 2 wasn't as good as Magicka 1, but, you know, you know. Which now I'm finding out maybe it was because it was a different developer. Look, let's be real. Making video, making video games is hard. <laughs> making sure, video yeah, games is yeah. hard. Get, get, you got to give yeah. people. You got to give people a try, Brad. You got to give them. Yeah. Oh, 
Like, let people sure, cook. I believe you. But like, again, it's the purchasing decision of a thing. Anyway, alone buy. in the dark 2024. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you finish this game? I have finished it twice. What the shit? I mean, okay. again, I don't know why that surprises to me. Be I don't fair, know why that surprises it is a, me. He's going to tell us about short... the new FIFA game after this. Brad, please. This is a short game. It's like six-ish hours to a playthrough. You have to realize this game, and the developers have specifically admitted this, is heavily inspired by Resident Evil 2 Remake. Okay, like, okay. I was they, about to say, their if entire you design. Evil. Their entire design yeah. is very much mimicking Resident Evil 2 Remake. Right. I mean, that's not surprising. Oh. Resident Evil 2 Remake is a in a, is in a, is in and of itself a very um uh uh what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, it's it's going to inspire a lot of yeah a lot of development, a lot of games that, coming forward. It's is like, that why in the two years of marketing this game they showed exactly 2.3 seconds of combat? I well, did I find mean, that a bit suspicious. I mean, the combat isn't necessarily that good. I would completely agree with criticism of the game that it's just, it could be I mean, a lot better. And it's just it. not. Do, you do, but... you do combat in this footage? Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. Continue. So you will see. Um, but I kind of, kind of like it. Um, well, I, I like the fact that they ape the Resident Evil 2 remake formula so much that, so like, the things about RE2 Remake, like how the campaigns were split up and you were basically go doing the same things, but you were seeing it from different characters' perspectives. So you got different mm -hmm. dialogue and different cinematic events and even had character-specific like levels to go do. Like right. that's in here. So whether you're playing as Edward Carnby, uh, you know, David Harbour or Jodie Comer as uh, Emily Hartwood, um, you get... You're basically going through the same game, except you're getting different perspectives on cinematics uh, so and events. Does that account for your for your two re your two playthroughs? You played through the entire game each as as one character. Yes. It's not a like you swap back and forth during the same playthrough. No, it's you it's, play through it's one it's okay, two separate, gotcha. complete disconnected campaigns. Um. So again, yeah, like Resident Evil Two Remake, okay, yeah, or like Resident, Resident Evil Two in general, remake. I suppose. Um. So it's, it's you going through basically the same structure in each campaign, but at a certain point, the game gives you a, the character exclusive level and content. Um, okay. And it, it, it's kind of cool how, how they do that in, in that like each character's not, not to put too fine a point on it, but each character's exclusive content is like dealing with their own past trauma that haunts them. Ooh, um, Silent Hill. I mean, I, I, I kind of, I guess, maybe. I look, don't know. look. I just want to be. I just want to be totally honest here. I'm looking at this footage and I'm thinking to myself, "This looks like my jam." <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm Come not on, even gonna Nick, lie. You fucking no, no, no. Mark. <laughs> I am. I'm a fucking Mark, man. This is. This is like. First of all, you got to remember, like the original Alone in the Dark. It's kind of like what inspired the led to the the birth of the original resident evil so like now we've come full circle and now resident evil or this is kind of aping the the remake series of, of resident evil but it's also a period piece i am a sucker yeah for period so pieces funny, so the, though, because like so this the, is this is edward carnby like the same like like oh like chubby guy from the original and like the dude from the 2009 who's like i don't have your stone and fuck you anyway yeah like all all of these three people are the same well, yes. I'm pretty sure these are just different takes on the same character. There's no, yeah, it, there's no actual guys. like, the there's no universe. There's I'm no the, connective I'm the fucking tissue. Lightbringer. There's no connective tissue between the Lightbringer and this and this iteration yeah. of of Edward no, Carnby. No, no, I will not. say, so, is, is my, I, I have been giving you a hard time knowing that you at least played that bad one from 2009. Stinky Dave. Is at least at least there's some connective tissue there between this and that and then you know something that you've played before so to be fair but this anyway. is nick's lane so i wouldn't not give him shit for playing this because this is what he likes yeah so this this is a period piece it uh it's set in 1929 uh it's a year like after. Noir. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it's set in louisiana 
Uh, you're, you're, you're the, most of the game takes place in Dorsetto, which is a plantation uh, medical facility uh, outside of New Orleans. Um, you go there. Uh, David Harper's uh, Edward Carnaby is a detective for hire. He is hired by your female protagonist, Emily Hartwood, to go to Dorsetto to find her uncle who has gone missing. Um, you just said so many words that are just like, yeah. <laughs> I know like, I'm, 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 I'm setting this no, no, up. No, no, no. Like you're checking my boxes. You're like detective. Oh, okay. Louisiana, uh, uh, period. But you know, it's just like, sorry. I'm just easy, buddy. I yeah. want to play this game. <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I, I don't, is it good? Hold me back. I, I, I kind of enjoy it. Like there is, there is okay. definite jank with this game. Like it probably could like could have used another month or two in the oven just to be safe. But what's here mm-hmm. I think is is fun. This did, I, this I, looks very reminiscent of like the original Resident Evil. Is that accurate? Like it like pacing wise and like struck I'm easy, just, ease up on the Resident Evil comparisons. Those are heavy combat games. No, I'm like the I I I'm specifically comparing to the first one in the mansion, not the remake, like the first game where it's like you could go a while between running into enemies in that original and when you're running around the mansion. And to me, like the pacing was so much slower and so much more deliberate in that first game. It's part of the reason why I adore that game. Um, and this, so, this is, I mean, this obviously takes place in a mansion as well. So it's kind of like giving me those vibes. So the, the, the game is kind of split into two alternating kind of design principles. So you have a lot of the game happening in Dorsetto in the mansion, Ooh, the plantation bread. mansion in which you are going around investigating the mansion, finding clues, solving a lot of puzzles and trying to progress the narrative and find out what happened to Jeremy. Um, yeah. Uh, there's a, there's a recurring puzzle that happens very often, which you have to find a way Mm. to go into these alternate levels, which are like Jeremy's memories or fantasies. Uh, as he said, well, yes, they're blended like seamlessly. So you like open a door and suddenly you're in like a totally different like pl- place. Absolutely, yes. Shit, hmm. add to the list. That's my jam. That <laughs> happens I'm very often. I'm getting uncomfortable seeing Nick get a boner from this. <laughs> there, like, there, it, there actually it, it, are a good like, number of jump like, scares based around that mechanic. You play so many of these, Nick. I know when I love it. I, I love it every time. I know, but man, it, it's like, it's like you're hearing about like a, it, it, it's like someone's, it's like Nolan's pitching like, Hey, there's this new Metroidvania out, Brad. It got a 63, <laughs> but you love Metroidvanias. And I'm like, I do love Metroidvanias. Yeah. But I've also been playing them nonstop for the past several decades. I'm just like, I, I okay. How's Jody? That's, like, that's, that's exactly, that's exactly what's happening. But I've been saying, like, what is is it is it the is it the texture quality here? What's tickling your fancy, really? No, it's it's. I think it's specifically the period piece thing. I am such a sucker for like the, like I think like La Noir Mafia Three, not a super well received game, but I loved Mafia Three. Just, you just like it was the fedoras, period piece. don't you? You're a fedora. <laughs> I love fedora. I love fucking fedoras. Oh, sorry, nice. I should rephrase that. I love fedora. Well, I will. I will say right now that uh, Edward Carter he, he loves his fedora. And uh, mm-hmm. a lot of animations are about him keeping the fedora on his head. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> like his the hat was, will be knocked off, and there will be an anime specifically to get have him go grab his hat. Like, uh, part do of you his have to, do, you, do you have to like walk up to it, pick it up, or can, can you like leave the hat behind? No, it's like a cinematic thing, is what I mean. Ah, uh, like motherfucker. A lot of cinematics, he'll, his hat will get knocked off, and he'll go grab the hat. Gotcha. Anyway, did you ever okay. play the Sinking City, y'all? Uh, I, I own that game. Not I own that game. I heard bad and I things. want to. This I seems want to like so bad. People, this seems this, you want to so bad. Okay. No, I mean, try. I'm not hiding my boner anymore, Brad. I'm not gonna. I'm lie just saying, about like, it like, like I get more like Sinking City vibes than something like a Resident Evil game or whatever. But I am glad I'm finally seeing combat here. I suppose. Uh, what percentage of the game would you say is combat? Uh, thirty to forty percent. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, there, expected, there is combat honest. and there are plenty of combat encounters. Um, but that's not really the draw of what you're doing. It's kind of like exploring the environment, finding puzzles, solving them, uh, progressing the, the narrative, things like that. It, I mean, there is a sneaking mechanic in the game to help you minimize your encounters. And it, it, it does 
encourage you to run away when you want. I say when you want, because on normal, um, the game does give you a lot of resources to work with. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't tried on higher difficulties, Wait, that, but that might be a red flag. Like, so like you're getting an abundance. I'm of, never truly hurting for ammo, but there are, mm. there have been moments in which like, I'm kind of stressed for what I, my current resources. See, that is the kind of mm. thing that I hear. And like, that's the first thing you've said to make me go, okay, maybe they missed the point a little bit, especially if they're trying really hard to like recreate like it because it does seem like as much as inspiration they're taking from resident evil 2 remake it does seem like they they're going very much for like resident evil 1 specifically in terms of like pacing and tone and sc scope or something or, or whatever but like part of what makes that game and all resident evil games of that genre i would say so special is like how important it is to manage your inventory and if you're like never really having to worry about that in a game like this I don't know, but man. but but to me, I don't know. Isn't the, the combat when I say daily premonition, it's more like uh, combat's that unfortunate thing you have to do that's just getting in the way, not the thing that you want to be like well balanced, right? It's just it's is it the thing you just want to get over with, right? So you can get back mm -hmm. to the puzzles and story and stuff. I will say, I mean, like, I think the combat's okay. It's it's inoffensive. The thing is, is that it's. I think it's a little too generous to the player. It does have this rather robust dodge mechanic. You press a button, your character robust. does a, a, a Alan Wake style kind of dodge maneuver. Yeah, I saw um, you doing your little pro dodges. <laughs> and like none of your enemies are projectile enemies. So like they're, hmm. they're always coming in for the melee strike. And it's, it's so oh. generous that you can dodge well away and be able to turn around and, and open fire again. Um, there's just also a melee combat mechanic that is based around uh, objects you find in the environment that are breakable. Um, mm -hmm. So again, it is very generous. It probably would play better on a higher difficulty level than what I did. Gotcha. But I mean, like, again, you know, combat does not seem like the thing, right? Like, it, does, it doesn't seem like the focus of this game. No, it's not. Um, and, you know, as long as it's not, for me, it's like my... As far as I see, as long as if it's if it's finding its stride with like the other things that I I appreciate about the series, like puzzles and atmosphere and and level design, which, you know, you haven't really said anything about level design, but like those are the things that are, I think are truly important. As long as the combat is not actively bad. You know, it how's is the it writing is. and performances? That's a big question. <laughs> I, I, a, I like the performances. I like the writing. I think it's they're both fun. Uh, I thought they were David, in that demo in that whatever you want to call that thing. There I mean, was, I, I do like the characterization that they, they do with each of the characters. I think on the flip side of that argument is that so they're, they're doing the RE2 remake style campaign thing where the characters occasionally meet up and do stuff like like that. Right. Yep. The problem is, is that the character you're not playing as isn't seeing the horror that's happening in the world, the madness that's, that's taking over Dorsetto. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like they're met with like, they're like, you know, so a character will see a closet opens up into like this weird freaky dimension area. Right. And both characters will be in the room. Your character, your protagonist you're playing as we'll see what's going on. It will like call it out to the other character. And they'll be like, that's just a closet. Why would you go in a closet? So but the other like, character is like as if is is like basically not see it's like not ex experiencing the same thing as the protagonist. As yeah, you're you're, protagonist. you're not getting that, and I I feel like that's a little bit of a misstep. I don't think they handle that that well. Um, I think it would have been better if you had a few more interactions between Emily and Edward. Uh, but, but as like standalone characters, they're fine. Yeah, as as standalone characters, they're fine. Um, again. Since like Emily is Jeremy's her uncle, so she wants to go there and find him. Edward's just kind of like the, the sassy detective that has been hired to go help in this investigation. So like They're their characterization is is radically different between the two um, in their separate campaigns. And okay. I, I I like how they do it. Um, it is it also feels very, yeah. again, 1929 period piece appropriate. So like the overtones again, of dialogue and like what they're talking about, what they're saying, like 
it can feel a little oppressive. It can feel sexist and things like that. But it's it's appropriate for the time period in, of and of the like, South ah, Louisiana nineteen twenty nine. Ah, yes, there it is. That's the thing. <laughs> he said, Nick, I feel like you need to do like a dinner theater, like a period piece <laughs> dinner theater, really badly or something, just to get it out of your system. Like there's uh, there, there's there's a cutscene I so, recorded. So the, the is, is there is I, I was a little concerned there might be kind of like celeb. You know, I'm a Hollywood celebrity, so I'm, uh, video games are beneath me and I'm going to phone in this performance, you know, over like a weekend or, you know, half a work week. I'm going to record my lines and move on with my life. I mean, are they giving it their all or is it, you know, we've seen they're, it. So they're many, making so an effort. I don't think like they're this. giving it their all. <laughs> I, I say, think I it's just like the this, nature uh... of, of, the, of the, the story they're choosing to tell. Like, I will say... This game, again, it needed a little bit more polish, like another month or so in the oven to really, cl- you know, make it crystal perfect. You mean two years, right? I mean, video game development's weird. I don't think a month is... It needs it <laughs> needs polish. But, like, the dialogue, like, I think it's... I think it works for what's here. I, lo- okay. I enjoy it. It has that kind of weird oddity of, like, the NPCs you're interacting with. Like, they're... They've been exposed to the madness that's going on for much longer than either of our protagonists. So, like, they'll say weird and disjointed shit, and it doesn't kind of make sense, you know, for our that's, characters to understand. But it's intentional. intentional. Yeah. Um, hmm. I will say, my favorite hmm. part of the game... So, Dorsetto is the mansion you're exploring, um, and it has that kind of non-Euclidean architecture sometimes happening. It has those kind of jump-scare level transition stuff that happens and when you unlock a new area and when you are exploring that area and that non-euclidean architecture or that environmental change happens it's kind of cool because it that was catches kind of the you focus off guard of the... but more importantly it, it like it alters your perception of the environment that that uh, was kind of the focus of the demo of that because there was no combat in that demo. It was all kind of story stuff, but they were sh- yeah. they were trying to show off kind of like the non Euclidean architecture and like the weird world and like what's going on. And I think I thought that stuff was effective enough that it got it mm-hmm. piqued my interest. Yeah, um, I think it works pretty well. Like I said, I demonstrated you know, in the in the footage here. It happens a bunch of times throughout the game. Uh, I like it. I, th- I think I think this is ga- this game is pretty all right. I mean, yeah, I mean, it kind of reminds me of like, it makes me want to play like a PS2 or a 360 game, honestly, right? Like, not in like a bad way, kind of like. Makes me want to play Resident Evil 1. (laughs) Not Resident Evil. Resident Evil is like a big budget successful blockbuster series. I mean, like like, the original Resident Evil 1. Like, that was two. I didn't feel that way. There was, you know, like horror games from, you know, like Call of Cthulhu on Xbox. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, like stuff that's like this is kind of fucked, but this, it's kind of nice. This is, and there are lots of these. Like that, that, that kind of horror game never went away, and those games never review all that well. But like the people who play them, the people who appreciate them, really do. There are people in our own Discord who swear by the Sinking City. You know what I mean? Like it's just, <laughs> it's, so it's. But like that's, this is cool. this is but like and it, it is also cool. costs the same as Alan Wake too. That is, that like, is the problem. You know, that is maybe a problem. Like here's the like, here's the deal, I, Chris Davis. Up. Chris Davis, I'm gonna play this, but you know what? I'm probably gonna wait for a sale. <laughs> like I'm gonna put I mean, some on my wish list. Wait for it to go on sale. I bought it on sale myself. Like that's, that's okay. Um, what one thing? One last thing I want to mention. I'm pretty um, sure you can only get it on a sale right now, which might not be a good sign, but that's also good for the consumer. Um, on what? Steam, it's like. Uh, I mean, I I I got it for twenty dollars off. On a, on a coupon so yeah, like whatever go. um the last thing i want to mention real quick before we move on um again like re2 remake there is an emphasis on replayability here which is kind of cool um there's a lot of uh objects in the environment that you can find which are called uh i believe langulas or something like that i don't remember what they're exactly called Lengulas? Starts with L. um mm-hmm. you collect them in batches of three and and they are spread out across both campaigns um some of them will actually unlock weapons and content you find in the game. Uh, uh, some of them will provide you with like extra narrative explanations of what's going on. Oh, Brad, and this is one thing Brad might like. Every single uh, article and thing you can read in the game is fully voice narrated. 
So, here's the real question. Here's I, the real question. I do and this appreciate is, that. Here's the real question, and this is, I think, will make the difference between whether Brad appreciates this or hates it. Even though it's voice acted, can you start playing it and then walk around the world while it's reading it to you, or do you have to stay on the screen while it reads it to you? Nope. Yes, stay on the screen. You had a compromise Fuck there. Me, you can't have everything. So you can't so have close. everything. We were so close. God damn it. Okay, you um, knuckleheads. I want to see y'all play. Y'all are both going to play this game and love it, and that's great, right? $60. That's fine. But, you know, as the Alone in the Dark stands, who've also loved that 2009 game, um, y'all should play the 2015 Alone in the Dark no, Illumination no. co-op shooter. I thought they Ooh, shut it down. Chris Davis, like, we should play that together. Oh, you can't play it anymore? I thought they shut it down. Like, it was supposedly Dude, so bad they shut it down. Alone in the Dark Illumination on stream. I will, if the game is still available, I will stream that if I can. If, if Chris Davis wants Fuck to play yeah, it with me. yeah, dude. It's on Steam. Uh, don't you wish that evil on like a Left 4 Dead or something? We'll have to do oh some my research. God. That's so funny. That's so funny. What? Remember what? who I said is like a Alone in the Dark uh, mark in our Discord? Anyway, uh, I'm looking at this Alone in the Dark, you know, Illumination, Zerby. mostly negative on Steam. And I'm looking at one friend recommends against this game. It's Zerby. <laughs> one friend already owns this game. Wait, Zerby. is this mostly negative on the Illumination one? On the Illumination one, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, I was going to say. Uh, Hi, Zerby, by the way. <laughs> Zerby probably hates this game. Yeah, but like, How like I was you? trying How to finish, you? Um, there are uh, the the items you pick up, the uh lagniapis I don't, I don't remember how they're pronounced uh thank you tx storm, storm surge um they can actually unlock secret endings to the game there's like five endings mm-hmm. to the game um and some of you can only unlock by collecting these across both playthroughs and i i, I like that that just i mean that's cool that's game. like some classic i feel like that's some like classic ps1 era survival horror shit and i i'm, yeah. I, I'm here for it like i love that <laughs> that's pretty cool um yeah, you know, I, I'm still. I think there is still a place for this. Like, I think comparing this to something like Call of Cthulhu was actually a really smart comparison, and I think there's still absolutely a place for those kinds of horror games. And it yeah. makes it's no surprise that they don't review all that. Like, they're not lighting the world on fire, but like, like I said, the people who really love that that kind of like throwback again, style of a horror game again live if there for wasn't it. like a bounty a a a there is so many cool interesting horror games in the indie space so many that do this kind of thing and more and less there's so many like half of all indie games are cool horror games apparently yes um i'm just saying it's a bit of an ass 60 bucks i mean there's a lot out there just hit up carlos and he'll give you like 20 awesome horror games for less than five dollars you know that is true he is kind of an encyclopedia of that shit but i'm glad somebody played it Thank you, Chris Davis. I, I I did want I did want to hear somebody talk about it before I pulled the trigger. And again, I'm probably going to wait for it to go on sale. I expected uh, it to be you, Nick. I got to be honest. I expected I it to be me as well. Curveball. You got lucky. I'm still playing Persona, which, by the way, let me tell you, I'm closing in on on the end of Persona. Um, mm. I have about two months left worth of time. Seems like in a the game. I mean, it 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 can be, especially when dialogue sometimes takes fucking forever. But uh, I'm coming for you, Brad. I'm coming you, for those you, four uh, points. I'm coming um, for those four points. Four points. Um, yeah, you can get them somewhere because you're uh, you don't have many yet, Nick. Nope, but I will have four soon, and then I'll and then I'll shift back to rebirth, and I'll not. I'll get one, and then I'll be a five. The uh, the, the best, by the way, the best into this minor like alone in the dark diversion that we've had here on our podcast is that Nick plays it and goes like, dude, that game was dog shit. What the fuck was Chris Davis talking about? <laughs> That'd be funny. Probably not. I, don't, I, I really don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> because... gonna happen. This, this is <laughs> Nick. He loved tormented souls. Okay. The, okay. First of all, Which I did not love. Whoa, 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 hold on. I did not love tormented souls. I loved the way that game is the, the design of that game. But some of the other, some of like the like other Resident shit, Evil 1. it was very much like Resident Evil One. <laughs> but like some of the other shit in that game is not good. I don't, you know, I liked Tormented Souls. Let's just leave it at that. I liked Tormented what? Souls. Tormented but again, Souls they just beating this game on Metacritic. I will just, I mean, I I think it just goes to show that like this is a genre. Like I feel like some people within some genres, some people really appreciate like there's kind of a sweet spot as far as like reception. And if it's falls outside of that, they're just like. I'll pass. 
but like horror games specifically, it's a it's like a it's a it's a gulf. If it falls anywhere within this like large range of of critical reception, I'll be like, that is, I'm, that is what I know. I'm in. Well, I'm when in. the review scores for this dropped, like it seems like the people who were anticipating this game were like, yes, it's <laughs> like it's not below sixty. Yeah, like, no, that's it's like a big yeah. win, you know, which is fine. I, I mean, they and the, and you know what, they played it and they liked it and they were right. Yeah, but yep. I mean, it's yep. kind, it's kind of like that with like horror films, right? Like no one's expecting it to be some like prestige like film, right? Like it doesn't have to be to be a successful horror film, you know. Very I true. don't think people who are into yeah. horror movies are expecting. I just, I just hope this game. I don't. I, I know you're not going to like this statement, Brad, but I really hope this Uh-oh. game does well. Because oh, oh. Uh, pieces, I mean, I don't the this game was published by THQ Nordic, which is Embracer, and you know what Embracer is going to do if this game does not do well. Oh, well, don't make us feel bad. I mean, of course they're going to get shut down if they're Embracer. My God, they're everybody. <laughs> everybody's going to get shut down if they're under Embracer. But, but yeah, huh? Interesting. Hmm. Just think um, about that. Yeah, yeah, there you there you go. Here you have it. Alone in the Dark, twenty twenty four. Um, is it scary? High. Did okay, we yeah, ask, we never really asked that question. I mean, what's scary? What, I mean, well, you know what I'm Chris dead Davis... inside when it comes to horror games? Like, nothing oh, affects well, me, we'll but I know there's going to be yeah. scenes that will affect Nick. That's the biggest surprise of this whole thing is that Chris Davis <laughs> decided to play the horror game as someone who just always likes to say, well, I felt nothing when I played this. I tried to point it out, and people call me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I'll play it. I'll let you know uh, on the on the, on the the actual, like, spooky front, I suppose. Uh, but again, I'm going to wait until it goes on sale, probably pretty dramatically, at least half off. Probably I'll wait till it hits 30 or something. Uh, I'll and, and give it a couple it. months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're st- it's, it's only March. There's plenty of time. Yeah. OK, before we before we do four player minute, Chris Davis, I know you wanted to talk kind of the big buzz that's been happening today um, specifically is we finally got some news. There's been a, a bunch of preview footage or preview um, co- coverage coming out about Judas, which is Ken Levine's. Uh, first game in what a decade or over a, a decade? decade. Uh, hmm. he from Ghost Trap Studios is the name. Of the, is it Ghost, oh, Ghost Story. Story? Ghost yeah. Story Studios. Um, this is a game that was actually announced at the Game Awards. Like was it at last 2022, year? Or year December twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty two. So it's been two years. Um, and this very much like the first time we see it. It's very much it's giving some serious Bioshock vibes right but if the other part of this the whole the whole ken levine talking about the next game that he's working on everybody's been kind of patiently waiting for is you know obviously his his uh what do you call DC it time. uh yeah but like narrative he, legos. his but his yes narrative legos his buzzword that he's been talking about for ages now is narrative legos and i'm sure i personally have not had a chance to go through a lot of this coverage that came out today i was going to probably do that tomorrow so I don't know, but I've seen a few people talk about narrative Legos. So this is the game. This is the game that this is going to have the quote unquote narrative Legos that he's been touting it. for so long. This is, right, this is the 1.0 version of that. Um, give us it might the, be the 1.05 version. But yeah. Give us the the 10,000 foot view of this. Basically, press were able to go and play five hours of the game, five or six hours. So of the game. to be clear, this was not a preview event. Um, This was what should be considered like a level setting event in which they are coming out and they're saying what this game is going to be versus Mm -hmm. like a a full organized preview event, which is like a briefing for the press. And they you play a little bit and you do interviews like that. This was just like a they brought people in the office. They plopped them on stations and said, have fun. Let them play for five hours. And then afterwards, they did a little bit of, you know, press interview stuff with Ken Levine. Right, and you um, say a little bit. There's actually been quite a bit. Like he's, I even yeah. saw him appear on like a few like smaller podcasts and stuff where he was just mm. talking for like an hour about not yeah. just not just Judas, but he's bit like he was talking about just kind of like his legacy and talking about Bioshock Infinite a lot, I yeah. think, and you know, that kind of stuff. So, uh, but yeah, this yeah. is the floodgates are starting to open on Judas. I guess is what we're saying. Yeah. Um. Okay, I'm gonna need. I'm gonna throw. A Remember lot what I said? Do you like Bioshock? He's about to say, "Do you like Bioshock?" <laughs> I'm going to throw a lot of adjectives at you. I need yes, you I do. to calm down, and I need oh, you to God. let me let me get through this. Should this is prepared. very exciting to me. This game is going to be a single player 
Wait. Procedurally driven, uh, generated. Hold uh, on, let me get my mad Bioshock list. game, um, based around Bioshock-esque. player reactive narrative design. That okay, gotcha. Okay, that's that's okay. a lot of Got edges. Got it out. Let me break it down. Okay, so again, is this is real quick before, before you go into this. Remind us and remember everybody. This is all. This is this is what they say it's going to be. <laughs> this is what we hope they deliver on. Well, I mean, at this point, like if if they can't deliver on those adjectives, then the project is entirely a failure. Are you saying um, Ken Levine's a Peter Molyneux? What are you trying to say? <laughs> Uh, no. And how dare you? Uh, so no, no one wants to n- never go full Peter Molyneux. Everyone never, never go. Full I mean, full Peter Molyneux. I, the important thing, I mean, one thing to, before you get into this is, you know, Bioshock Infinite was nothing if not divisive, right? I mean, I really liked that game, but I know a lot of people really hated that game. Yeah. Uh, I think but a lot of like, it had, eh. It reviewed well. It just didn't really, you know, it was like a Final Fantasy uh, 16 situation, right? It didn't set the further, world people on got fire, away but with it did pretty it. well. He, people, he got away with it. That's a funny way of putting it. He got away with Bioshock Infinite. Okay, anyways. Okay. Tell us about Judas. Okay, this is a game. It uh, And I, one rogue, one uh, adjective I forgot to add in. It is a roguelite. So, okay. I'm listening. Okay, first person game uh, with the art aesthetic and combat design of Irrational Games' Bioshock work um, set in space. The whole narrative premise is that, long story short, a billionaire from the modern day used AI LLM technology to look at the biological data of everyone in the world. And use that to predict, like, what's coming for humanity and things like that. He figured out that a plague is coming to wipe out the our species. So he okay. cashed in all... He's a philanthropist, so he cashed in all of his resources to build a generation ship to take a portion of humanity to Proxima Centauri, which is the next closest Earth-like star in the galaxy, the Milky Way. It is... Four light years from Earth, so that's why it's a generation ship. Uh, it will take decades, if not hundreds of years, to reach Proxima Centauri. Okay, okay. He, in in trying to keep the remainder of human society together, he created this uh, civilization uh, based around a caste system. The caste system is based on uh, social credit status. I think you understand I want to remind you, Chris Davis. I want to remind you, Chris Davis. You did say long story short. Yes, I'm giving the long story short. Um, The entire organization of the society is based around popularity. Um, So your social credit, like what you've heard about overseas, like if you are following the the norm and saying things that people like, your, your status in society rises, so you become what's known as a pilgrim. If you are saying things that are seen I negatively by society, you are considered a violator, and you are thrust down in society. And this okay? is all, this society exists, what, on this ship? On this yeah. ship. On this on okay. this ship called the Mayflower. Um, oh my god. <laughs> the oh, entire thing is run by the big three. These These... NPCs that you've seen in the marketing. You have Sheriff Tom, who is Troy Baker. Um, you have Nefertiti or, or Nephi, who is uh, there. And then you have the other girl. Her name is Hope. They are a family. And at the beginning of the game, or sometime shortly before, they realize they're not human. They find out that they're mm. actually robots. Um. Cute. And your main character, whose name is Judas, she does something. You don't know what it is. She has amnesia. But whatever it is, it fucks up the Mayflower. And she doesn't know what happened. She doesn't remember why. All she knows is that everyone on the ship now hates her. All the survivors on the ship hate her. And she has to work with one of these three characters to find her way off the Mayflower before it's destroyed. 
Okay. I like the premise. Yes. We got there. We got there. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I, I had to, I had to set that up because it's a lot. Um, and it's it also incredibly lot. interesting to me. Um, so the whole run through of this game is that it is a procedurally generated rogue light, um, in which Judas is exploring the Mayflower, what remains of it, trying to f- get her memories back and find a way off the ship with the cooperation of one of these three characters. Each of these three characters have a di- have a different philosophy after being discovered discovering that they're actually robots. Like Hope herself, like she was like the the counselor for the ship. She was she maintained the social cohesion, right? When she found out she was a robot, she went into utter despair mode and like started tearing off her skin and like her limbs to expose like yeah, that she is an android. Um so hmm. she has this whole dystopian outlook that like she wants uh, you to help her so she can end her life because her software will not allow her to, to commit suicide. And then mm. you've got the others like Sheriff Tom, who's trying to maintain things as best as possible to get humanity to proximate the tree. Then you have uh, Nefertiti who is trying, who realizes that maybe humanity shouldn't survive. What if I was able to convert everyone into, into perfect robots? So like three different disparaging outlooks and you're constantly at war competing and cooperating with one another to progress so, to the end game. Real, so real quick, the rogue light element of this, I guess. Yes. Cuz rogue light tells me you're like doing runs? Yes. So how so what's the run? Like what's right? So what is the how does how does this translate into a run? So this is a a rogue light survival game. Um, okay. It's not like Bioshock, in which you have the oh, no. the Vita chambers, and you constantly exactly. have a, a, a replenishing amount of health, and you can find health everywhere. No, there is no health in this game. There is per area there is one health station, maybe. Um, okay. So you will die, and you will die quite often. They're not detailing what the death mechanic is for coming back and why you come back and how the roguelite element works. But there is a significant roguelike element that's tied into the narrative. See, I find that interesting because if people, assuming, because people went and played five hours of this game, I feel like that question should, unless they were told they can't talk about that, which I feel like would be very difficult to talk about if that's like the the crux of the entire game and you played it for five hours, you know what I mean? Um, I, I mean, well, I mean, they didn't are go... Those exp- are people talking about their experiences out there? Yeah, there's like a there's I mean, like that's a the whole point of this two like, and a half hour right? podcast uh, by uh, people from GameSpot talking about it with an, an hour long interview with uh, Ken Levine, which is just I mean, like, they're how just, do you talk there about are things like that, that I without. think they might be under NDA and they're not allowed to talk about. I think there's also just some stuff they don't want to talk about because they don't want to spoil it. And I think the death mechanic is one of those things. It just seems um, like one of those things. Like eventually, eventually, if you want to get people on board with this and you really want to sell people on the concept, you're gonna kind of have to pull the curtain back on that a little bit because I feel like that's that sounds like that's gonna be a pretty important aspect of the game that people should probably understand going yeah. in, especially if people are maybe not like super keen on roguelites in general. You know what I mean? Like people who who have never played I don't a roguelite use those words, right? Do, do are they? No, they they use word, the word roguelite and oh, prominently. Yeah. And talking about this game. Okay. But you know, a lot of people are looking at this and probably going, Oh my god, it looks like Bioshock. I love Bioshock. But like <laughs> I feel like you kind of maybe need to understand how roguelites work and know what you're getting into, or you're gonna have a lot of people being maybe a little upset, like feeling like they've been I guess. I mean people misled a little bit. I mean, I mean this is this is know, why they were holding Hades this event probably to level more than set and talk about what this game Bioshock. is. Infinite. I mean, so. you're right. You're right. So and again, I haven't watched I haven't personally gone over any of this uh, preview footage, but it does sound really, really cool. So so um, here's here's what I think is the coolest thing about this game. This is where the narrative Legos come into the game. Ah, uh, yes, the that Legos. You have to work with one of the three characters to escape the Mayflower. Um, when you interact with those characters, um, they function a lot like a viable version of Johnny Silverhand from Cyberpunk 2077. In that I have they are projected out to the environment, but they're more than just interacting with you. They're helping you in combat and puzzle design and encounters and things like that. Mm, okay. um, 
Flip side, because you are maintaining your allegiances and interactions with them, if you devote more time to one of the characters versus the other two, they will start trying to convince you to the, to join their side and help them out with their objectives for a while. And they may, may even become antagonists and direct resources on the ship to attack and prevent you from progressing with the other character. They will even, like, you'll spend a, a bunch of time with, uh, like, one character and another one will come on and say, Hey, listen, I know you are interacting with this person and you're talking with them. This is what they're really like. This is, this they is start why to the seeds of deception. So yeah, no, yeah. you get deception, but you also get character backstory and you learn more about the world and things like that from these interactions. There's uh there's one particular footage piece of footage in which, uh, you've evidently been working with either Nephi or, or hope for a while. And you go, the, the player goes to get to a resource station and Sheriff Tom pops in, closes the door in front of the player, locks them out of it and six, a bunch of his, uh, robot deputies on you. Things hmm. like that. Um, that's, that, I mean, that's. You know, my first reaction when I saw this game, which obviously as someone who loves Bioshock games, all the Bioshock games, I was like, and the fact that we haven't gotten Bioshock 4 yet, which has been rumored for so fucking long at this point. Long. I saw this and I was like, okay, I love Bioshock. This looks like Bioshock. I'm in. It's kind of, it, but on one hand, I was also kind of like, I'm a little disappointed because of how much it looks like Bioshock. And like Ken Levine has not made a game in like 10 years. This is not irrational. He's worked, He's broken off to make it. Like, how do you break off from irrational and then go and end up making something that looks just like the game that you just made? But like, mm -hmm. now that we're hearing more about it, it definitely does seem way more ambitious than I was kind of assuming. Yeah, but that's... The <sighs> But that's it's the dangerous like, part. It's still the mm, little Peter Molyneux yeah. going on there. Just a little it bit. All, it all, it's not even that. It also a sounds like I, I feel like, you know, the flowery language makes it sound so. It's also it also kind of sounds like you spent the last 10 years making a way of the samurai game. It it doesn't actually seem. I mean, <laughs> here's the thing is that <laughs> you're you're. I, I, I think about you the the marketing is gonna make it sound bigger than it is, but like on always. the facts of like what this it's a roguelike a game where you can make different choices and have different relationships as you play doesn't actually sound like like this groundbreaking thing that I think maybe it sounds I, th I think it sounds before. maybe and if it just I think plays it sounds like Bioshock. I think it sounds more ambitious when you come at it from the perspective of if you look at this as like a Bioshock spiritual successor, it seems really ambitious because Bioshock was never really that. It didn't have yeah. a lot of those kinds of elements. It was kind so, of like more straightforward yeah, and more of a first true. person shooter. This seems like it's definitely going so, bigger than that, but also not groundbreaking in the sense of like we play a lot of video games and a lot of games have tried these kinds of things before. So what what they're talking about with the narrative Nego uh, oh, narrative late <laughs> narrative Nego narrative, narrative Legos, Legos. The, the, <laughs> the idea they have is that none of this is AI generated. This is all just bespoke written content that's broken up into what voice actors call barks. So they'll they'll barks. <laughs> I mean that's what they call it in which there's you know very short bits of dialogue um, that are sewn together like if you if you play first person shooter and you have an ai partner call out enemy 130 meters out carrying this weapon such, such those are barks that are strung together of things they say to form sentences prepositions mm -hmm. uh, uh things yeah, like that yeah. so they they take that idea and they flesh that out into the narrative and it's all about how those narratives interact between the various characters, how they string them together. And that's where you get like this proposal of massive potential replay value with unique uh, experiences for each player in how this event and this dialogue can and influence the player into doing X, Y, Z and how they all tie together in a web. No, it, so it, it sounds really like cool. their, their whole it's also idea. One of those I feel like you have to, you have to kind of like see in action. You know what I mean? L Levine was really talking yeah. about like how in Bioshock and in Bioshock Infinite, how 
the player did not have much narrative agency going on. Like, mm-hmm. you know, would you kindly, yeah, that was a, a twist, but that didn't actually influence how the player interacted with the game. Right. And mm-hmm. in Bioshock Infinite, how uh, Elizabeth herself, like would react to what the player does and what the player says, but those are scripted sequences that the player has very little influence on. The whole idea here is that the narrative and how they present these interactions are based on what the player does. And that's a whole other ballpark, man. Um, that's what they're proposing that's gravitas to the way you're saying that sentence. But it also, we played Baldur's Gate 3 last year, which is like mm-hmm. this like fucking landmark RPG where you're mm-hmm. constantly making choices and it's constantly reacting to the player and mm-hmm. no playthroughs the same. And people on their fucking eighth playthrough are seeing things that are completely new. What I'm saying is outside of like the terminology they might be using and the gravitas that people are, <laughs> I think we're going to need to play this fucking game, honestly, because the story sounds cool and the setup sounds cool, but nothing you're saying beyond that actually sounds like this I do, I do, well here's the thing I, I, here's the thing this is one thing you got to remember this is a game that has i don't know how long it's actually been in development but it's probably i mean he's been he left irrational like 10 years ago right after yeah. infinite came out so like when this when he first dreamed this up it probably was a bit more groundbreaking than maybe it sounds now especially now that it's finally going to release in a post Baldur's gate 3 world which is kind of disappointing i feel like that may be took the wind out of his sails a little bit well, in terms it took of... the wind out of everybody's sails really. right yeah. but like that's not really a bad thing i think i think no. but i think going into something like this and 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 maybe using Baldur's gate 3 as the reference point is just kind of setting yourself up for disappointment yeah. i think no, it's more impressive right. to think I, about I, I, it I, it's not even I, all i'm saying is like these concepts may have sounded like interesting when he was pitching them 10 years ago but now like not just Baldur's Gate, but like all kinds of indie games do all kinds of like ambitious shit with like narrative sure. design like that, you know, like, uh, like, a uh, uh, fucking, uh, fucking Jesus Christ. I'm blanking. The, fucking Jesus Christ. The, the, the strategy RPG I played a, a couple of years ago that as the story is procedurally Wartail? generated as you play, my God, wilder myth, my God, wilder wilder myth. there we go. Like that, Thank that did promise. like groundbreaking, like, like narrative stuff. Like, I mean, I'm just saying, I want to play this thing. I want to no, see I, footage. I, I, like, like podcasts with like official interviews and stuff. I'm going to be until I'm really seeing this thing and really seeing like certain people saying things about this kind of game. I'm not, I'm going to be skeptical. And I think that's fair. After all this time, after Bioshock it Infinite, is. you know, after, you know, the stuff that Ken Levine's been saying for 10 years, I think it's fair to be a little skeptical. It, they need to put up or shut up or they need to show, don't tell. Yeah. I mean, no, I, 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 I think that's fair. I think, I think everything Chris Davis has said is fair too. I mean, I think it sounds exciting. I think the, the big takeaway for me is that this, now that we're actually seeing it, it does seem like it's way more of, it's more than just a straightforward like Bioshock successor, which is kind of what I mm-hmm. thought it was going to be, especially after that first trailer. So, oh, this I is, mean, I'm, gl- I'm glad it's more than just another Bioshock. No, I am too. I am too. I was a little disappointed at first. I was like, I was like, Judas seems pretty cool, but let's be honest, it just looks like he's circling back around to System Shock again. Um, yeah. uh, and Brad, to your to your point of show don't tell. I mean, that's like every major game announcement that ever comes out is they always promise True. such big things. And True. I don't want to say they rarely deliver, but I mean, I mean, true. It's just this guy and this specifically has been such yeah, a long time. That's true, that's and, true. and like, he's been using narrative Legos for 10 years, the quote unquote narrative mm-hmm. Legos for 10 years. And a lot has happened in the last 10 years. And, uh, you know, he is a bit of a Peter Molyneux at this point. He's not Peter Molyneux, right? But he is someone who promised a lot with Bioshock Infinite. And by the time Bioshock Infinite came out, you're just like, well, it didn't have a lot of this cool shit that we thought was going to be in here that was even in some of the demos that we've seen, right? And it's yeah. like, it, 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 in some of the stuff that people saw behind closed doors um, early on. So he's he's well, got a lot to prove that's why let I'm me, gonna let be me close on, skeptical but. let me close on one more thing 
Okay. Um, so he was talking up in his, in his interviews about like why it took 10 years. I mean, other than the fact that it was a lot of iteration and testing and trying out new concepts and writing and writing and a lot of writing. Um, he was talking about how 2K or Take Two specifically realizes that uh, what the, the the landscape looks like for the industry today, and that they need to invest in new IP, and they need to invest in new technology. And what the way he was talking about it is that Take Two let them have the time to develop this new technology, so they can use it in more projects, more other things. Like they're playing the was, long game. He was like he Nemesis was putting system. heavy praise on the, the Nemesis, Nemesis system from Shadow of Mordor. Oh, um, mm-hmm. And he and it sounds like Take Two wants to take this technology and use it as a found a, a cornerstone foundation for future games that aren't Ghost Story. But isn't that what mm-hmm. Take Two said about the actual Nemesis system? <laughs> well, that's WB. I first feel. Off. Orc oh, Legos. that's right. Orc Legos, they call them. Orc, Orc Legos. Orc Legos. <laughs> okay, that's a good. That's a great point. Uh, I do think we need to move on. But yeah, I I will try and remember to post the, sh- the link to maybe some of these interviews in the show notes or whatnot because a lot of the stuff that we're talking about and that Chris Davis is kind of summarizing here is just bits is just a, a ten thousand foot view of like all this preview coverage that dropped it's a lot. Uh, today. So I'll post really a few key ones cool. in the show notes if you're curious, but it does sound cool. I'm very much looking forward to actually, one, watching the coverage myself and playing the game. So we'll see how they go. Do they give any kind of inkling about when we're ex- we should expect this? It's probably a ways away, right? Or maybe, uh, I, sh- maybe I shouldn't very say that. Are asking for fantasy critic reasons? He, yes. he, would, <laughs> yes. he would not rule out 2024, but he would not give even a release year on this um, that's probably that's probably how, a smart how like crushed but given the fact if this given launches in early access no <gasps> that, this, this will be early access there's no way i mean how can you do this after 10 years in development <laughs> no no but here when? i mean here's the thing is that this build uh like they're they have gotten their production pipeline to the point to where they can rapidly inject and iterate and produce new builds like this five hour build uses content that was made only a few weeks ago they're they're able to get what? that out that fast, and if they're able to have a five hour like long self-art. playable build for the public <laughs> to experience, like yeah. that tells me it's probably much further along than most people think. Well, it has been ten years, so I, I think the hope would be that it's it's we're we're getting pretty close. It's been three weeks, yeah. Nick. Anyways, <laughs> let's go ahead and wrap up. Let's go ahead and wrap up the four player minute. We're coming up on or we're. I well got a over. quick one. I got a quick one. All right, this guy. Hey. Pick us off, Brad. Uh, I just want to shout out to Slice and Dice 3.0 finally came out. Um, I've been playing the, the game I've been playing for a year or so, a year or two at this point was a 2.0. And I've always called it like the perfect phone game. I rotate between Slay the Spire, Slice and Dice, and uh, Into the Breach. Still the perfect trio. 3.0 is out now. It's finally out on ios and steam now um and like 3.0 adds a lot of actually new shit i still think it's the perfect phone game so if you have an iphone or whatever definitely or a steam deck this would be good on steam deck um but if you have a phone just play it on your phone because it's perfect for a phone um just an awesome awesome deck builder dice based roguelike i mean if you like slay the spire that sort of thing uh highly recommend um slice and dice uh cool. by tan t-a-n-n 3.0 mm. it's out it's cool get it Wait. get it all right i'm gonna throw it over to nolan now all right my four player minutes are now um so uh slightly less video game related a couple things uh we we ended up going to dc this past week um mm-hmm. to see the cherry blossoms that were in bloom Ooh. um so it was actually very nice i, I mean i guess i say not but po- game related i did play pokemon while i was there <laughs> uh but uh but yeah it, it was nice to kind of walk around the uh we were near the the jefferson memorial uh and i'm glad MLK you got to see memorial. them because they're not gonna be there for much longer oh yeah um uh and so but it was nice i've always seen photos and stuff like that and so it was nice to go and see them wait what's uh, not gonna be there anymore the jefferson memorial or the or the trees the trees <laughs> oh i thought this was like a 
Thomas Jefferson's statues are coming down and Chris Davis ain't happy about it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what oh, I thought. How I'm dare you to... take our Confederate oh, God. heroes? Well, you know, he wasn't a Confederate hero, <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. Mm. Well, mm. So Chris Davis, are you referring to climate change or the actual removal of the trees? The actual removal of the trees. Okay, yes, because, yes, they are removing some because there's issues with climate change and rising tides. Um, but uh, because it is in a like a like an inlet, um, I forget what it's called, but it's a it, during like high tide, like it actually starts coming up. But anyway, regardless, um, other non uh, video game related stuff. We finally got a fence at our house. We've not had a fence for the entire time we've been here. Uh, and, and so I yeah, so I can finally take the dogs in the backyard to play. No one can finally walk around, no one can finally walk around his backyard completely naked. Well, so it's not a privacy fence is the only thing. <laughs> oh, okay, um, never mind. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think I could get away with that. Uh, but well, how close um, is your neighbor? I mean, close enough. Close enough. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they don't need binoculars if that's what you're asking. Uh, but uh, so. Well. Um, are they trying to see your penis or not? Because Brad, that was the joke, Brad. I was making the oh. joke that they didn't need the binoculars. They don't oh, need binoculars. They need a yeah, telescope. Yeah. Um, Damn. Gotcha. And so, uh, yeah, uh, getting to play with the dogs in the backyard has been fun. Um, all of that being said, um, yes, I did put up Dragon's Dogma. While I am enjoying it, I am. I do have a couple of issues uh, to Chris Davis's point from earlier. I'm hoping a lot of those are more the technical things that, that can be addressed with patches. Uh, I'm still going to continue to play it though, because it's still, uh, I'm still enjoying it a whole lot. I think they have um, a patch come in here pretty quick. They do. I and think it, the patch it includes a some ray things. tracing toggle, which mm. they didn't have the option to turn off ray tracing before, I guess. It, yeah, it, it was to be uh, nice. Uh, yeah. They've made nice some in interesting console choices. Version. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's it from me. Cool. Uh, Chris Davis, final thought? Uh, final thought? Um, well, he's smiling. Brad, I can see it. I'm doing it's it. Coming. I Don't started it. Unicorn Overlord today <gasps> or yesterday. No. You doubted me. You didn't think I'd fucking do it, but I did. I'm just about Wait. to rescue Scarlet. Um, I didn't and, doubt that you would play it. Yes, I you doubt did. That you, you fucking would... said last time, like, I, I had it on my shelf here. He's like, dude, he's never going to unwrap that. Like, what? no, you're no, this is fiction. No, my, the narrative has been that. I'm sorry, bro. This ain't 13 Sentinels. The story's mid and it's not that kind of game. That was, that's been the narrative. Um, it's more just, you know, I'm sorry. Well, it's I am just a thoroughly game. enjoying it. Let me tell you, well, um, is, getting into it the, is really good. It's, it's, I, it's quite good. I'm, I'm really liking how they they're setting up. I love how much the game makes you feel like you're making progress because every single stage battle happens on the same overworld. So like yeah. when you go between finishing a match and uh, the beginning of the match going backwards, like you feel your progress because you have to travel far. Um, yeah, it's very really does a good job I mean, of it, translating that. To it's a, got a big world. It's cool. I like it. A it lot. is. I play it every day. Yeah, I am very Friday. glad that I got to play this. So just throwing that out there. Cool. Also, uh, in theaters Friday, Godzilla. Like, go go <laughs> see Godzilla. Uh, didn't we just get a Godzilla? I'm just kidding. I know. I know the difference. It's, it's like always a, Godzilla, a good like, time to be time. a Godzilla fan, Nick. I got a coworker talking about this uh, Monarch show. Did you watch that, Chris Davis? Yes. Of course he did. Of course it he was did. Okay. Is that a Godzilla show? Yes, it is. I don't know that Godzilla one. is in it. No. I mean, Godzilla that's. I mean, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be real. He's. Uh, Chris Davis is not wrong. If you happen to be a Godzilla fan, you're probably you're eating really well right now. There's a lot of Godzilla content. A lot of it out there is decent to excellent. Uh, so you know, I'm very happy. Not for, for Godzilla you. gamers, though. <laughs> no, no, definitely not Godzilla gamers. That's, now Toho, that's... Toho's not going to invest the money on that anymore. They don't trust the gamers. Yeah, they don't. Quite frankly, well, let's be real. Them. Let's be real. Gamers can't be trusted. Okay, no, my turn. My turn. I'm going to keep this real brief. Uh, I just want to share my frustration. Uh, there are rumors. This, albeit rumors, nothing here is confirmed yet, so this could still change. But apparently the new IP that Sony Bend, the studio behind Days Gone, one of my favorite games of all time, the new what IP that they are working on, that they, that they were basically, they said they were told, no, you can't make Days Gone 2. 
and then they were put on this other new IP. Apparently, it is a live service game. Yeah. Mm. And I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. I'm I'm a little crushed. I'm a little fucking crushed. I love that studio. I love that game in particular. And I was really, I was like, like, even though I was really crushed that they were told they can't make Days Gone 2, I was still excited to hear them say that, oh, well, we are going to work on a new IP. And that's always exciting. Um, but, and then after the whole, all this kind of like, you know, the sh- Sony's big kind of like pivot, starting to pivot mm-hmm. away from live service games, I was kind of hoping, you know, well, there was never really any inkling up until this point that the game they were working on was live service. Um, but apparently the, it's strongly rumored that it is in fact a live service game and it has not uh, been affected by this pivot. So hmm. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not just saying that I'm not saying there, that there have been means... great live service right. games that have come from really good right. narrative single player designers, like, right. like uh, Ninja Theory's Bleeding Edge. If you okay. Will. Well, you're being a smart ass now. Um, but I, I mean, I'm not sitting here saying that like just by default, because it's a live service game, it's going to suck. It's just kind of disappointing because even no matter how good of a live service game it is, I just don't, it, I, I, I know myself and I just know I'm probably not going to allow myself to really get lost in that game, in that world, whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Just the, organically, because I just, I just you, don't man. do that. I just don't do that. Can you believe um, Suicide Squad came out like a month ago or two months ago, and and we have so moved on with our lives. This is this was Rocksteady. This is the Arkham games. This was Rocksteady. It's and like, really crazy. They're like, well, we're making a live service game, and we're all like, no, please don't do that. And they're <laughs> like, but this is this is the future. And then they did it, and it came out, and everyone said, fuck this game, and no one played it, and we all moved on with our lives. And it's such like a no one cares anymore. It's such like horrible business decision whatever and it's like but like the thing is our hearts don't even care and that on a subconscious level part maybe on a subconscious level i feel like everyone the the community as a whole is like the faster we 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 stop caring the faster we stop talking about it the faster it just kind of (laughs) fades into the background the faster the faster rocksteady will be able to move on to the next thing which we know will not be this because Gosh. they they would never they would never be told to do this again, right? So maybe this so, is all, you know, um, maybe this is a good thing that we've already forgotten about it. Like, it ain't a good thing, man. This you know, hurts. I mean, not a good thing. Maybe not a good thing. I'm, just, tell you I'm what, trying to the, find a silver lining here. The the painful thing today for me in reading this news was that as this was being announced or being quote unquote revealed, um. A Marvel I mean, game announcement that... was was oh, made at yeah. almost the exact same time yeah. for an Ooh. Overwatch clone. Um, oh god, we forgot to talk about that. Which one? Sorry. Huh? So there's two things. One, the thing Chris Davis is talking about is a Marvel game is going to be announced tomorrow. That is apparently a six, like a live service game in the style of Overwatch. That's the Amy like Amy Hennig one. No, 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 no. We didn't no. talk about the Amy Hennig thing, which is we finally got our first look at the 1943, the period piece. Black Panther, uh, Captain America game with a- with Amy Hennig. Ooh, I am here for that. Um, I know nothing about what that game actually is other than period piece, Black Panther, Captain America, like Amy Hennig. Or something. Uh, I, just, I mean, I, just I doubt that's I want to punch dudes as, as Captain America. <laughs> I just want to... I- I want to punch dudes as Black Panther. I want to I want to run across the rooftops of 1943 Paris, France as Black Panther. That sounds Paris, fucking France. sounds fucking awesome to me. So, that's my second part. That's the happy part of my four player minute. Sad part is that I'm not I'm really nervous about the future of Ben Studio with this news. Oh, video uh, games. Yes. The future of video games. Yes, I was I was a little crushed about the future of video games. Um Twisted Metal got canceled. Twist, yes, a live service Twisted Metal game was in fact canceled. Canceled. Uh, that is sad. And with that, guys, that is our that is our show this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, fourplayernetwork.com is of course where you can find all of our episodes. Oh, public service announcement. I should have said this at the very top of the show. This is but important. I, didn't. I completely, I completely forgot. This is very important. I cannot believe they're doing this, but Google. If you happen to listen to podcasts using Google's. Mm-hmm podcast service which is what how i listen to podcasts 
uh, they're phasing it out on April 2nd. You will no longer be able to use it. They're trying to tr- they're trying to get people to like migrate to YouTube as a podcast service, which I've never I don't understand. I don't like that. That's weird. It's dumb. I'm not going to do that myself. But if you happen to use that app and you subscribe to our show, uh, Google, huh? start looking for an alternative. So maybe you know we we would th- we would hate to lose your listenership or hate to lose your subscription because. A fucking Google in this case. Is that tied to other? Is that something that's like tied to other apps, or is it everything? No, I mean it's just it's just like Google's equivalent of like Apple Podcasts. It's just a it's just a really good app for like housing all that. You know, the it uses RSS feeds to populate all the podcasts. You can subscribe to them. You could, you know, it's just manage everything. There's a there's a million of them. There's a handful of really good ones, and I thought that was one of the really good ones. And since I don't have a Apple device, I can't use, I use Apple Podcasts. We Podcast are on Spotify. Republic. I will Seems say this. Good. Great. That's a great recommendation. I will say this too. I had a couple people bring this up in Discord asking, have you considered going on Spotify? I want to remind everybody, we are on Spotify. If you like, <laughs> if you use Spotify, we are there. We are on a oh. lot of services. In fact, if you use one of like, you know, if you happen to use like uh, iHeartRadio, we're on iHeartRadio. We're like on all these things. Um, I think Amazon. iHeartRadio. Yeah. Yeah, we're on all like the service that we use to like distribute our podcast. It just, it disseminates it to a we're bunch of different Libsyn. services. And we're on we Libsyn. Are on, Check out Libsyn. We are, I mean, we that, are. Libsyn is Libsyn is our just that's our host, Brad. That's our podcast host. They distribute oh, okay. our podcast to everywhere yes. else. So yes, we are on Libsyn, but nobody so just nobody just go uses Libsyn to like listen store to shows. On your phone and type in podcast app, and you'll find us. If you go to fourplayernetwork.com slash subscribe or po- slash podcast, you'll find a bunch of stuff about subscribing to our show. Just know that Google is going away. Or Google's podcast thing is going away on April 2nd. So if you use that, start finding an alternative. We would hate to lose your listenership or your subscription Ask because G. of this. Ask like Jeeves. Fuck it. Podcast, uh, Ask anybody. God, I should have said that. The very, that should have been the first thing out of my mouth when I started the show. Because no, half the people listen to our show don't make it this far. Okay. No, no. True. Anyways, thanks for listening, guys. If you're not in our Discord, we'd love to have you. It's discord.gg slash four player. And uh, we will be back next week. Maybe talk Rise of the Ronin, talk more Dragon's Dogma 2. I'm sure there'll be more news, more games to talk about. So in the meantime, uh, y'all be safe out there. Be good to each other. Play video games. And good night. Bye. 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 Bye.